Okay, uh, so first, before we start, thank you for your participation, okay? And um, between brackets, uh, this is just to, uh, to say the main goal of, of this simulation is to be able to participate and to also f uh, to experience uh, what is going on in the Council in these kind of negotiations. And of course, everything which is related to that, which is uh, diplomacy, uh, uh, quality of the argumentation, different kinds of, uh, of policy and decision making, all these uh, factors are always important. So I would like just to uh, encourage you to, um, I mean, just taking into account that the main goal is basically to experience the EU uh, in the, I would say the main, uh, the main uh, center of the policy process, which is the negotiation and the decision making. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, basically to use this kind of uh, diplomatic language and to uh, use as much as possible this kind of reasoning and rhetoric to convince and to, uh, or to refute the arguments of others, okay? So that would be the main goal, and I will encourage you to use this kind of uh, this role. And now Peter, which is the rep uh, representative of the European Parliament, is going to uh, make the moderator of the, of the simulation, and is going to explain uh, basically the agenda for today that you have already in your, uh, 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 we already give you uh, uh, the information about the agenda, but uh, Peter is going to explain more in detail how it's going to take place, okay? Uh, okay. Um, well, thank you, Javier. Uh, and I'd like to also reiterate what uh, Javier has said uh, and to thank you all for uh, participating and for uh, the work you have done in preparation uh, and we look forward to being able to enjoy uh, this event um, which is the first time uh, we have organized it at the, the university uh, and which we hope to become uh, an annual event. Um, Regarding the agenda and the procedures, um, the, well, I'm going to make a couple of comments. You have the documents that were in the, in the Dropbox, but I just want to go over a few of the principal factors before we begin. Um, to begin with, the meeting will be chaired by uh, and moderated by myself uh, and Javier who will also act as the representatives of the Parliament and the, the Commission, who do not take a formal um, part in the negotiating, but uh, where and when necessary to facilitate an agreement may express an opinion or uh, propose um, informally uh, an alternative. So during the debate, uh, at various stages, we might have the opinion of the, the Parliament uh, expressed that might change the dynamic. We might have the, the Commission um, modifying their proposals. But um, the main activity will be done uh, among yourselves, and that's the, the, the ambition of this uh, event. The procedure for doing so, first of all, the voting procedure in the European Council uh, and on the issue of the uh, multi-annual financial framework, unanimity um, is the, the goal and the voting procedure. Um, and the ambition of this simulation is to replicate that and achieve a unanimous uh, agreement um, one factor that isn't um, explicit in the procedures that I put up that I would like to just go over uh, or just mention briefly now is that in the vote for unanimity, an abstention doesn't count as a vote against. So uh, you could have an abstention, but unanimity among those who have taken part in the vote and it would count uh, towards unanimity. So you can think about that in your, your strategies and your, your negotiations. Um, the vote will be taken in secret. 
um, we will pass uh, pieces of paper and you will write uh, your uh, yes or no. Um, and we will, we will count those uh, votes and if it's in agreement, we will pass the motion. If not, we will uh, open a, a motion for debate again. If you so decide, there is a, a mechanism whereby the European Council can, if they agree, um, provide the Council in later negotiations with the possibility of passing uh, parts of the agreement by uh, qualitative majority voting. So during the session, as an option, uh, if there is no possibility uh, for unanimous uh, agreement, you can decide among all of you to change the voting system to uh, qualified majority voting, which we will do as uh, two-thirds of the uh, countries uh, present. Um, the vote can be called by uh, yourselves or it can be proposed as well um, by the, the chairs if we see that um, an agreement can be uh, reached at that moment. Um, in terms of then the agenda um, for how we will start is we will open up um, the, the floor. Right, we'll, we'll go straight. Um, there are two sessions divided by uh, a short coffee break. Uh, we will open up the, the floor um, to debate the Commission proposals. In the agenda that was uh, put up on Dropbox, we had divided the proposals between the two sessions. Um, for the meeting today, we have decided that from the very first session, all the motions are open for, for debate. Um, So you have the first motion, which is in response to the Commission proposal about increasing, maintaining, uh, well, the Commission proposal is to increase the budget. The second proposal, the second motion, is uh, on the possible introduction of own, own resources. And in the third uh, motion, we have the different uh, divisions of uh, how the money uh, will be divided between different sectors and different specific uh, projects. In order to uh, make a comment, make a statement, make a proposal, uh, we would ask you to raise your hand uh, and we will take notes and we will um, call each person to, uh, to speak uh, in the order that we have. Um, written down. One final factor is that, um, like I said at the beginning, one of the great parts of the, one of the most important um, aspects of negotiations in the European Union is this uh, informal um, behind closed doors or, or side deals. Um, even before we arrive at this stage in the European Union negotiations, there will have already been um, months and years uh, of work between civil servants, permanent representatives uh, in uh, Brussels, preparing, negotiating, doing a lot of the, the groundwork before it comes to the, the Council. So although we cannot simulate everything within a short uh, one-day simulation, we would like to be able to give you the opportunity to, to experience and see how the informal negotiations work um, because it's not necessarily always the, the most logical or the best explained argument that uh, has won, but who can command um, the uh, majority or who can uh, build uh, cleverly uh, a coalition for their point of, point of view. So in that spirit, 
during the sessions we can call um, confessionals, timeouts, um, in order that we can uh, carry out these informal talks and uh, coalition building exercises. Those can be called either by ourselves, the chairs, or um, in agreement from the, the member states. So I think, uh, I, think uh, it's, uh, I hope it's all uh, clear and uh, we would like to, to begin in order for you all to have a, a good uh, chance to, to participate and to speak. So um, in that spirit, we will open the floor for um, comments and uh, positions on the, the proposals outlined by uh, the Commission. So, given that Austria is right now in a break, I think we can start by alphabetic order knowing the, the preferences of the first motion. So, we can start with Bellium uh, and then we can just go, uh, we can make the first round. Do I have to explain my preferences in the first um, shift? I mean, it's in the uh, exact. Sorry. Yes. I mean, so, yeah. we're, we're discussing if we, uh, do we have to uh, talk directly about our, our positions in every point, or do we have to make a globalized uh, point of view, or? Uh, we are going to uh, basically to focus on, the, on each motion or each issue, if you want, okay. and then we can just try to uh, negotiate different issues at the same time, but first, <laughs> We would like to know uh, your preferences. Uh, well, according to the proposal we have made, the Commission has made, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or the size of the budget. Okay. Okay. Um, well, in the first Commission proposal, uh, Belgium agreed with increasing the uh, the budget, the overall size of the budget. Um, I don't have to explain why, right? Just <laughs> okay. Um, well, we do think that we have to um, to increase the budget because, uh, of course, we want to uh, fund um, some initiative in a long-term period, and uh, Belgium is being contributing uh, substantially to the budget and the amount of. Um, resources that have received for, from the European Union has been uh, really low comparing to other countries. And um, we have to pass this austerity and to move forward uh, new initiatives and uh, new projects. projects. And um, respect of the second issue, the, the own resources in the tax, um, Belgium agreed with um, using own resources and the the financial transaction tax. Uh, we think it's a good idea and will increase our possibilities. And um, yes, we do need to invert. And uh, on um, introducing a new tax is really beneficial. And um, the third proposal. Just focus on the first one at the moment. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, just because maybe it, it wasn't clear. Um, we will do it in terms of the first session uh, regarding motions one and two, but of course um, in the side negotiations and, and, uh, and private talks, uh, or uh, even in the, the speech, if it's related, you can, you can mention it. But uh, essentially what we'll do in the first session is vote on the first two okay. uh, proposals. So we would like to hear the comments on the uh, motions one and two. 
if within that, within your argument, a comment upon the other motions is relevant, you're free to introduce that. But uh, the vote will be on motions one and two in the first session. Okay. Um, yes. Um, if you yes, uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say is that even though Belgium is not in the in the any of the groups the friend of better spending on the or the cohesion policy, um, our policies are most focused on better spending, to increase budget and to better distribute it. And um, yes, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, next, uh, then, can we hear the position of uh, Czech Republic? Please, thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Commission for the proposal of the Commission of, of the Financial frame Framework. And about the, the proposal of increasing the the budget, uh, the European Parliament said uh, that freezing the framework uh, at the 2013 level was not viable and it was needed at least a 5% of increasement of the budget. So the Czech Republic uh, thinks that it's necessary to increase the expenditure for the multi-annual financial framework to $3 billion of my country. Uh, which will be an incrementation of more than $142 million every year. And I think it's necessary because we, are, we need um, this increase to, to make functional the, the, European, uh, the European Union. Okay, thank you. And next, uh, from Denmark. Thank you very much, my honorable Chair Clinton. First of all, I'm the representative of Denmark. My name is Roger Padreny. And I will be, and we will be really clear in fourth point. First of all, Denmark is the main contributor to the European Union budget in absolute per capita terms and also in relative to each and GNI, sorry. Secondly, I want to tell you that we receive the majority of our funds from the CAP, and we advocate for, for a reduction in direct payments. Thirdly, and that's our main proposal, we advocate for a reduction of the MFF proposal. Nevertheless, we consider that increasing the expenditure cannot be a bad proposal. Nonetheless, we think that we have to reduce our contributions. As we have said, we are the major contributor in the European Union, and that's not equity. That's why we call for a reduction. We advocate for a reduction of our contributions, a reduction of our budget. Nevertheless, we think that we can arrive to an agreement if this reduction or this increase uh, have the final conclusion that we, as other important contributor countries, such Netherlands, such Finland, such Germany, Sweden, United Kingdom, finally we reduce our contributions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Denmark. Next, we will hear from the representative of Finland. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, the Commission proposal is to make a more generous budget, but uh, in Finland we think that uh, the question is about decreasing the proposal of the Commission because we want to make, take into account the tight economic situation. 
So we are not going to accept a proposal or a budget of more than a 1% of the European Union GNI of the 28 countries. Why? Because, yeah, in fact, the European Union is going to be reduced, less money to spend, and there will be some cuts in the, on the budget, on some headings of the budget, sorry. Uh, but we will uh, increase the competitiveness of the European Union. We will uh, get more efficiency on the recourses and more capabilities to face the crisis. The economic situation, as I said, is uh, one of the most important aspects to take into account. And we, repeating what I say, will not accept more than 1% of the GNI. Okay, thank you. And next, Germany. Um, good morning. I am Julia Codina, the representative of Germany. Uh, primarily, I wanted to state that Germany negotiation position is characterized by its role of huge net paying country and by the German attempts to draw the right lessons from the current public debt crisis. Um, so in the light of economic crisis and the difficult situation of for national budgets, the German government was opposed, is opposed to an increase of the European Union spending, wanting instead to see the available funds used more efficiently. That means that uh, Germany um, tries to restrict then we'll try to restrict the net payments by backing the 1%. And also, um, Germany aims to reform and tackle the weaknesses of the European spending policies by using, it, by using its better spending approach. As such, Germany proposes using the European budget as an incentive for structural economic reforms, especially in crisis countries. Um, referring to the introduction of our, our own resources, uh, Germany also backs the introduction of the FTT, but collected individually by each member state. Okay, thank you, uh, Germany. Next, uh, we'll hear from Hungary. Hello, thank you very much. Um, the position of Hungary um, regarding the overall size of the budget is that we are going to support that. Um, as we see it like um, for really importance to have the budget on this kind of amount. Regarding the current situation in all the European countries. And one really important point for us is that um, we are going to oppose any reductions of the overall sailing as um, we consider it to be really important that the, the budget is going to um, stay on the amount um, the Commission proposed. Um, one point to mention maybe would be that um, we like to have the debate more like in kind of a bottom-up approach and um, not um, starting with uh, capping the total revenue sailing of the budget, but whether we are um, defining the most important challenges and the priorities first, um, and then talking about any reductions. So um, yes, we would um, appreciate really a kind of a common um, financial crisis management. Thank you. OK, thank you, Hungary. So now uh, Italy. Uh, good morning and thank you very much. Uh, the new government of Italy have a very clear commitment. Uh, this is to uh, incentivate uh, the economy of the, the EU, EU and we want to increase the budget uh, in order to face the, the, the real problems of the uh, EU like uh, unemployment and and we want to increase uh, the, the competitivity of the EU economy. And we also, uh, we would like to maintain the, 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 co uh, the cohesion funds 
because uh, it's a, a really important issue to to est stabilize the 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 new countries and also uh, really important uh, regions of uh, our countries. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, and we would like to uh, increase the the budget, uh, but not uh, with, uh, with not increasing the the contributions of our countries. Uh, we would like to increase the budget uh, with increasing the taxes. Uh, the European taxes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Italy. Uh, and now we'll hear from Latvia. Thank you, Chair. Um, the Republic of Latvia uh, is really pleased to be here today, and thank you all for being here as well. Um, the Republic of Latvia uh, deems that the um, overall size of the next financial framework should remain approximately the same. As, um, uh, as we European countries cannot, um, Latvia believe that we European countries cannot um, bear the cost of reducing further the, uh, the uh, European budget insofar as um, we would, uh, that would impeach on the, on the fundamental uh, value of the European Union, that is the convergence policy, um, which remains, which is embedded in the Article uh, 174 of the Lisbon Treaty, which is that uh, in order for the European Union to be competitive uh, in the world, we need first an inter internal cohesion. That means um, uh, reducing the discrepancies between the different countries. If be, Latvia believes that if we reduce the European budget, we would only further um, expand the discrepancies between European countries. Therefore, um, Latvia believes that this um, reducing the um, welcome the proposition of the Commission, but uh, underscores that a re reduction would be um, not the adequate solution to tackle um, um, the current situation. Um, secondly, um, Latvia is um, um, is a friend of, co of the cohesion policy, as you have may have guessed, and, um, and would like to, um, to see also uh, further um, um, the implementation of further uh, financial tools that would be needed to be tested before uh, to be implemented, but that's what we are here for. And um, Latvia would like to um, thank you all for uh, listening to Latvia. Bye. Okay, thank you, Latvia. And next we'll hear from the Netherlands. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Uh, um, I represent Netherlands, the Kingdom of Netherlands. Um, first of all, I would like to remember that Netherlands is the sixth largest economy in Europe, uh, even his not, not being one of the the great, uh, the biggest countries. And we are the second country with, uh, with less investment uh, in relative numbers. So uh, we are totally against increasing the, the roof of the MFF. Um, we think the solution for a, for a better Europe uh, doesn't come uh, from money and more money and more money. We think that what Europe needs to, to solution the problem with unemployment and com competitive uh, the solution uh, comes to to be more productive and and to invest in uh, r and d and innovation and I have to say that Netherlands we have a lot of experience in that in that matters we are We have the best healthcare system in the eurozone and we are one of the with the country with the best uh, r and d uh, investment so I think Netherlands can help a lot. With the with redefinite the European Union, but um, not with more money. So we are not uh, we don't agree with with the Commission, and also in the matter of the um, the own recourses and the taxes, uh, we we are against that because uh, this will only complicate the funding system and make it less transparent. I think we can later talk more about this matter because I think it's important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, now we'll hear from Poland. Okay, thank you. Um, Poland is in favor of the continued increasing or strengthening of the EU budget. 
and in particular uh, the structural and cohesion funds to continue towards the common EU goal of enhancing economic, social, and territorial cohesion and the e e lessening the disparities between all of the member states, in particular the differences between Western and Eastern Europe. For example, the EU funding has been very positive for Polish debt. The money helps the government develop an innovation, which has in turn uh, accelerated our struggling economy and helped us at achieve long-term growth. So at a minimum, Poland wants the EU budget to remain the same as in increasing 1.05% of GNI, but we would support um, increasing the budget even more because we believe it helps, um, helps uh, the less developed Eastern European countries um, develop more. Thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, Poland. We'll now hear from uh, Spain. Uh, thank you and good morning, Mr. Clinton. Uh, in 2010, we established five headline goals to be achieved by the year 2020. One of these goals, the first one, uh, is that the 75% of the 20 to 64 years old European Union citizens should be employed. We need a powerful budget to make real de uh, these goals. So it's necessary to, to make real our needs, mainly the cohesion funds and, and the PAC funds to increase the, our budget, our multiannual financial framework budget. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Spain. We'll now hear from Sweden. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, uh, fellow delegates from all the European Union representatives. Sweden uh, thinks that there is no point but to reduce the budget. We think that it's unrealistic to think that unemployment, uh, other problems from very special countries will be solved by increasing the budget itself. We are for, according to the Commission communication, to um, allocate resources in an efficient way. That means to, impl that implies less challenges, less ambiguity terms, but determined ones. That means that uh, Sweden is, wants to freeze in payments, if not possible reduction, but at least we want to promote substantial cuts and more market reforms, taking into account uh, explicit criteria because there are some budget uh, gu guidelines which are being not been well impl implemented by the countries. So we want to in introduce clear and compulsory criteria in order to evaluate all this spending. Uh, in order to make a better Europe, we want to increase efficiency, as we said. We want to set a single set of rules and complement EU programs with national programs. We want to remind that Sweden represents 1.9% of population of European Union, but we are contributing uh, more than 3 billion uh, euros per year in the European Union. So that's not fair, and we are a net contributor, but we are not benefited the same way. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Sweden. We'll now hear from uh, the United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair, fellow ministers. Um, first of all, the United Kingdom would like to thank all, uh, all, you, all of you for expressing your opinions in a so clear way. Um, the United Kingdom will follow, I mean, uh, more or less the positions from Germany and Sweden since uh, the United Kingdom would like to see a reduction on, on the total amount of the EMFF. However, uh, we also want to promote uh, budgetary consolidation, and for this, although we 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 will try to to
to promote uh, the freezing of the MFF because we think that um, if we um, get to keep it below the, the, the rate of inflation, we will already go on the way of enhancing budgetary consolidation. So we think that having a ceiling on the overall size of the budgetary framework will already promote the ideal that already some delegates have, uh, have uh, posted and uh, thrown on the table. So uh, we think that our two main objectives is not increasing the, the, the budget of the, EMF, the MFF, but better spending and smart growth. So we think that if we get to plan the budget in more long-term uh, sightseeing, uh, long-term uh, prospects, uh, we, we will get uh, better management of this budget, so we will tackle all the errors and fraud that have been happening. And for this, we think that it's very important to have a more transparent way of managing the, the budget. And also this should be negotiated because it's not, always on, on, it's not only how, how much we spend, but how we spend it. Um, so finally, uh, we'd like to say that on what, um, on what considers the the um, taxes in the European Union. Uh, we are completely against any financial, like the introduction of any f financial transition tax, even at the national level, as some delegates have uh, proposed. We think that uh, GNA-based uh, GNA -based, uh, revenue collection is already sufficient, and it's also a good way because it considers the, the situation that its, ca its country is going through because if, it, uh, if a country grows, its net, uh, its net uh, importation will be higher. Um, and also, we want to keep the current British rebate. It's very important for us since we are uh, a net contributor also. Um, so, just to sum up, uh, our objective is to reduce the budget but make it more effective so uh, we can negotiate in which lines we want to invest and even modify some criteria or introduce bonuses, for example. Um, promote austerity programs and budget discipline to respond to the financial and eco eco economic crisis that just now we're, we're just starting to uh, go out from. And to this purpose, we contemplate a reform of the revenue system including an increase in efficiency and transparency on the budget and the individual programs as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so we're now going to uh, open the floor for um, responses to the, the various uh, presentations that we, we have heard. And um, before we open the, the floor, as the acting representative of the parliament, we would like to signal our um, determination to have some clear-cut uh, agreement on resources and funding and own resources uh, and uh, signal our, um, uh, our determination to have uh, an agreement upon that before uh, we would later accept uh, the full package. Uh, so we're going to turn then to the floor, so uh, if you would like to make a comment, please uh, raise your hand and we'll um, take them as they, they come. Okay, so United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in this matter, um, the United Kingdom has already said that it's against the introduction of any um, tax that the EU could collect uh, directly, such as a system of fixed annual lump sums, which um, the Commission, I think, proposed. Um, but instead of this, we think that we, there's a lot of space of negotiation in, for example, uh, making the, the resources that already the union has at its disposal by um, 
eliminating or substantially reducing trade barriers and market support since uh, we think that there are, there are already technical barrier, barriers to, to, to trade in which the Eurozone, well, yeah, it ha they have been reduced, but however, the requirements that uh, many policies in uh, that the national level impose to, to the goods that we trade are still uh, making additional costs and incrementing the prices of our goods that um, are damaging for our um, products. So we should, we would like to focus more in, in this um, modification of our policies rather than uh, increment, uh, putting additional ways of collecting money uh, because if we already, we already see a clear majority of countries that do not want to increase the, the, Euro, the Europe resources, we think that it, there's no, we see no point in this, but thank you. Well, uh, as a representative of the Commission, uh, I, I am very uh, glad of all the comments you already made, all the arguments you use. Some of, of them are very useful. Um, for example, uh, market reform, um, just make a summary of some of the arguments you use, uh, more specific criteria for allocation, more efficiency, setting clear rules, transparency, disparities uh, of the regions, uh, the crisis, the redistribution. All these arguments are really good, okay? But we need to reach an agreement, and of course, I mean, uh, most of these arguments are not related directly, this is the view from the Commission, to, uh, to the size of the, of the budget, or at least not necessarily, okay? So uh, the, the point of the Commission here would be uh, still to maintain uh, the proposal, and, uh, uh, and please, I think you should try to, um, uh, to reach an agreement on this, because uh, um, I, uh, my perception or the perception of the Commission is basically that uh, these arguments are more related to, um, well, to the efficiency of, uh, of spending the, the budget, okay, but not about the size of the budget. So I would be very glad if you could uh, uh, be more precise and also if you try to accommodate some of the preferences regarding to these different points. Okay. So uh, otherwise, uh, We'll make some derogations on this particular issue. Uh, and now we'll hear from the Netherlands. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, to answer what, what, the, what the representative of the Commission said, uh, I think it's a matter of, of uh, general concept, what, what we discuss here, because uh, we, we, I think that another thing that uh, the size and the, eff the efficiency is not uh, uh, separate things, and, and I, th I personally think that uh, we have to discuss. Uh, s I don't think some someone thinks that the problem is the size. Uh, I think, and I think a lot of countries agree that the problem here is how we spend this money. So, so we can we can. We can spend time dis discussing that, but that, but not the size. I think I think at least Netherlands will not will not accept to to increase the 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 budget. Uh, we we will be happy to 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 reduce it actually, but we uh, we know that that's difficult. But uh, for for Netherlands, the the best uh, our our number uh, it could be. Um, in 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 the in the framework in the framework period uh, before uh, the the number was uh, 975 billion uh, for Netherlands the the um, the number our experts uh, made a study and and they they, dis, uh, they they said that the the correct number for the for the interest uh, would be 960 billion uh, of of, bud of euros in the budget, so that's our our propose. Uh, first, we'll hear from Denmark, and then Sweden, then Hungary. But first, uh, Denmark. Thank you very much, Chair Clinton. Well, first of all, uh, we want to say that we have enjoyed really much the 
commentaries of our representatives from Czech Republic, from Poland, from Latvia and from Spain. Although you are not so net contributors as other countries, um, I think that your contributions have been really, really, really positive and uh, are really good for the debate. As we have said before, we are, from the beginning, we are advocating for a reduction of our budget. Nevertheless, we think that we can arrive to an agreement. We, have an, we can arrive in an agreement because we will be real clear. We can arrive in an agreement of increasing the budget. Nevertheless, as we have said, we don't want to contribute more. And we also ask the countries or the cohesion, the cohesion countries to contribute proportionality more. So we can increase the budget, of course, but not as the same proceeding as the same rule of proceeding that we are working now. Secondly, we think that it's important that this budget, and that will be the, that will be the debate before, uh, after, it's important that this budget um, is good used. If not, it doesn't matter if we increase or we reduce the budget. The important is how do we use the budget? The important is the second debate that we will have after. Thank you very much. Okay, Sweden. Okay. Does it? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's been under this situation from the last uh, years in in the EU that uh, that has been like an stabilization of the net contributors and the countries which receive more. Uh, it happens that the ceiling in the last EMF was 1975 billion, as my partner said. And we don't think that this amount is realistic nowadays. We actually think that a realistic amount should be um, more flexible in some terms, determining that it should be reduced to 950 billion, taking into account that each year we should have like a 130 billion amount of money and no more than 140 billion at least. That's our opinion. Thank you. Uh, Hungary? Thank you very much. Um, I can pretty understand uh, the opinions of the former speakers. And um, Hungary normally is not really known for being a big supporter of the Commission, but um, today we have to speak in favor for the Commission's proposal as we think um, we have to increase the budget in order to really um, kind of lift Europe out of the crisis and um, to reach the goals um, written down in the communication from the Commission like um, that Europe can be a catalyst for growth and jobs across Europe. So we really have to um, kind of um, address uh, all the crises and all our problems and this is not possible without um, increasing the overall budget. Thank you. Okay, uh, next Poland. Um, we definitely agree with what Hungary just said. Um, but so a lot of people have been saying that the goal is to spend the money more efficiently and obviously I think every country here would agree that we should spend our money more efficiently to make it more effective to increase the um, effectiveness of the European economy and focus on developing R&D and making Europe, the European economy as a whole more competitive with the rest of the world. But we have to take a step back here 
and think about what the goal, the original goal of the European Union is, and that's to make a single market where all of the European countries um, are at least somewhat equal and equally developed. And so if we were to reduce the funding, we would be severely hurting um, many of the Eastern European nations that have been using this, um, the, the benefits of the, of the European funding to help them um, escape low levels of development. Um, for example, since Poland entered the EU, our growth rate has increased from 51% to 68%. So it's, clearly, it's clear that um, the EU funding is helping countries like Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic, and Romania. And so we definitely think that if we were to cut the funding, it would severely hurt all of us and go against the goal of the EU of creating an equitable market. Thank you. Belgium? Um, thank you for uh, all your comments. Well, I'll, at first, I said that um, I would agree in um, to increase the, the, the budget, but uh, now we are considering the Commission's proposal to accept it the way it is. Um, as Denmark uh, said to the other countries, um, they are not um, one of the, the higher uh, GNI contributors, but Belgium is. Um, our contributions are significantly higher than our GNI. We are um, invest investing a lot. And that's because um, a few of, the, of our, um, our goals is to increase the private R and I, and promoting entrepreneurship, and uh, that's why the EU budget can help. And to reduce it, just uh, will will make uh, less opportunities, less um, cooperation between regions. So that's we that's why we agree with the Commission proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Spain. About better spending countries group mentioned, uh, in June 2011, Parliament adopts its general position towards the, this multi-financial framework. Uh, the report name is Investing in the Future, a new multi-annual financial framework for a competitive, sustainable and inclusive Europe. Uh, in, in this report, the Parliament uh, reject the position of those member states that aim to at freezing the next multi-annual financial framework, for example, France, Finland, Germany, the Netherlands, United Kingdom and Denmark. On the contrary, the Parliament suggesting an increase of the European Union budget. Uh, at the, at the total of GNI. We, can, we cannot reduce the budget. If we do it, the European Parliament will reject our pr proposition because compared to the previous multi-annual financial framework, uh, it will have, have been reduced. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. Yes, thank you um, for all your comments on this topic, but as Denmark has already said, Germany is not, um, is not uh, the budget is a red line for us. Um, it will not, well, it is not negotiable that it is increased because in these days uh, of international crisis, the same austerity should be applied on a national level and should be applied on for the MF, I am if F F. Um, we 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 simply won't raise the one percent because we are already one of the huge net paying countries, and we will focus on structural economic reforms, especially on the crisis countries, which uh, tend to be the cohesion countries. That's. The, that's the, our, 
our area of negotiation, but an increasing of the budget will be, will, wouldn't be fair for our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Finland? Thank you very much. Yeah, in what uh, size of the budget concerns, we say it uh, before and we will repeat it, 1%. We will not negotiate more than that. That's our red line. And there will be no unanimity of spending more than that. We, not, we are not speaking only about efficiency. We have a determinate context that we can manage. Well, yes, but reforming, not only increasing. We have to make employment, we have to restoring the stability, and we have to return the public finances to a sustainability path. So, 1% and no more. Thank you. Uh, Latvia. Thank you, Chair. Um, Latvia is really pleased um, of the current comments that have been made so far, and um, would like especially to, um, to welcome the comments from Hungary, Poland, Spain, and Belgium. Um, each of them has, be, has um, pointed out some key issue uh, within the debate, um, especially that um, uh, the budget for Eastern countries is key. And um, as Poland has pointed out, uh, and it's the same case for Latvia, uh, the EU budget for uh, Latvia is, uh, is essential to its growth. And if we reduce this budget, um, we all are going to be responsible for um, the, um, the deepening of the current crisis. And, um, and uh, as I pointed out um, uh, before, uh, it does not comply with the uh, Lisbon Treaty and with the convergence policies, but also by the fact that, um, and Latvia would like to record you all, that um, there is, um, um, we all, um, the member state of the European Union have been um, um, uh, pledging to um, implement the Europe 2020 strategy and, um, and keeping up with global competition and reducing the EU budget for um, structural conditions. Um, might not be uh, the, um, the best way to address um, um, economic crisis. Um, what Latvia would like to, uh, would like to uh, propose is that, um, as Hungary has underscored, uh, a more bottom-up approach, uh, namely to, um, to determine the size of the, of the budget according to the actual need of the member states of the European Union and um, in order to create more added value to, um, to uh, a sustainable economic development. And uh, therefore, um, Latvia would like to suggest an, an, um, an moderated uh, session. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you for the participation, but uh, as the Commission, I would like that no one in this room is actually putting these kind of red lines, okay, of 1%. I would like to remind you as, as, as representative of the Commission that um, the budget of the EU is extremely small. It is 1%, okay? And I remind you that the budget of the Member States is over 46 47%. So, um, the perception of the European Commission is that the crisis of the uh, world which is taking place right now needs European solutions, okay? So I would like that you actually could uh, help to find these European solutions. Um, and I think everyone should be a little bit generous on this. And please, no more red lines, okay? Um, as uh, the chair of the meeting, I would like to call uh, a short break of two or three minutes for, uh, to reflect on uh, the comments of the commission, uh, which the parliament would also like to uh, support and remind uh, delegates that the, exactly what the commission has stated, the size of the contributions are minimal uh, the size of the task 
that the European Union has in the next few years is enormous. Um, to get these economies going again requires European solutions, and uh, we don't see it uh, as being uh, an exorbitant increase in the contributions. We see it as um, a very modest uh, proposal, and we would like to uh, reiterate what the Commission has said. But we will take a break for two minutes now uh, for you to reflect on our comments, and then we will continue with uh, the Czech Republic, Sweden, UK, and Italy. So one more uh, quest, uh, issue, please. After the break, which is three minutes, we, we can have a coffee outside, okay? And you can uh, try to reach agreements in these informal meetings with your colleagues, okay? Uh, thank you for, uh, for this break, okay? And I hope you already uh, have some discussions uh, to be able to reach an agreement. Uh, just to remind you, as, as a member of the Commission, um, my plan is not to introduce a new uh, proposal. Um, so the idea is that you, you still have to continue um, negotiating on this uh, figure. And uh, just to remind and to make a call for uh, looking at the European um, solutions. Um, and uh, also to remind you that if you don't reach an agreement, um, well, you know, the status quo prevails. So these member states mainly that are pretty much against of um, uh, increasing or even uh, keeping the status quo of the budget, we have a, well, I think at the moment it's 1.05, okay? So uh, yes, make a call for a further cooperation uh, between all member states. So we can continue with, uh, with uh, some member states, no? with the Czech Republic, I think. Thank you. Uh, the Czech Republic agree the idea of the necessity of better spending and smart growth, but growth uh, comes by helping less developed regions. And the idea is to make a European Union. And I want to repeat the word union acting as one state in more than uh, one area. And with the enormous differences we have right now, we can only be, re um, sorry. And with the enormous differences we have right now between regions, uh, we can't be this state. And we won't never act as a big state in market areas as China or the United States. So we agree with the Commission uh, proposal, and if it were possible, we would like to rise the budget to more than 1.05% of GNI. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, Sweden. Uh, we have been talking too much about the red lines, about increasing money as well, the budget. But the size of the budget, it's important. And I want to ask you something to all of you, like Czech Republic, who is, whose representative is saying that it's in favor of uh, higher implementation of the 1%. Is in an inclusive Europe depending on an increase of the budget itself? Why don't we include other incentive systems in order to promote competitiveness, uh, free market, and also employment for those countries who are in crisis? Because we have to take into account that um, net contributor support is important on the size budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the UK? Um, 
The UK believes that the words that the minister from the Czech Republic has just addressed are are important to remind us that there are some countries which um, advocate for a certain position, but if we increment the size of the budget to m even more than 1.05, 1, 1 which the UK is not even uh, considering, but uh, are you aware that your increase in the in your apportation will be much slow, much lower than the ones that mm, the UK or Germany or Sweden would have to pay for? I mean, it's important to be solidary, but it's important also to be sympathetic. I mean, uh, we are a union, so we take care for you, and you take care for us. It's just a bilateral re bilateral relationship. So. Um, having said that, uh, the UK would like to propose um, to, um, as we would like to reduce the budget, but since we see that we are in a negotiation and therefore we have to make or we need to make some concessions, would like to propose um, the f freezing of the budget to, the, uh, to how it is but modifying or um, relocating uh, how the resources are, um, I mean, uh, how we decide where the resources go to and how they are spent. So this, uh, this way we see that we could uh, go, go to a path to uh, implement better policies. As the commission has said that we, we are facing a huge humanitarian need. So we think that if we could uh, spend the, this money better and control it better by introducing, for example, a system of bonuses when a country uh, reaches the objectives that uh, the money that has been uh, given um, and does it in an efficient and successful way, it can be given a bonus or more money, or uh, kind of a price. You're, you have done it good, next time you receive more. Um, this would lead to more efficient policies and greater objectives, because we see that there's no transparency and there's no accountability nowadays. And that's why, that's one of the points why we don't want to give more money, because we don't know where it will go from and uh, go to and how it will be spent. And finally, we just in more a technical line, we think that it's important that all the payments that we do uh, go in line of the with inflation, because we think that if not, we also in in real terms we lose. So it's important that we do not on, only take into account the nominal terms, but also the real terms. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next, uh, Italy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are in favor of the, our colleague in uh, Czech Republic, and we think that we should go further in the integration of EU, and it's important to have a, this, a, a, a global uh, politic, and we think that uh, it's an important step, uh, the, the increase of the EU budget, um, but we believe that this is not enough money uh, for a spend. Um, we are against the austerity policies that uh, the German um, state uh, proposed are also Denmark. Uh, we think that the uh, um, austerity policies uh, have a, a very uh, bad consequences like uh, for example, Germany, it's not, uh, the economy of Germany, it's not increasing as uh, we want, our, and for example, the French uh, economy or, or, the, uh, or, or these politics have a, have a, a dramatic uh, consequences for uh, Greece. And, uh, we, we are, so we are agree of this increase uh, of the budget, but it's not enough for us. We want to increase uh, this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Next, Denmark. Thank you very much, Chair Clinton. Well, first of all, as Chair Aregi from the Commission has said, we have an important task here. I think that all of us, we want to arrive in, in a, an agreement that uh, an, an important agreement that uh, helps our own national economies, our own countries and all the European Union to grow and to be a better union in the future. And when I'm talking about better union in the, in the, on the future, I'm talking about a better community. That's why I will tell you something, we will tell you something. If we don't arrive in an agreement today, our future will not be the same as it has been our past. That's why I'm asking all the cohesion countries, and when I'm asking all the cohesion countries, I'm asking Spain, I'm asking Czech Republic, I'm asking Latvia, I'm asking Hungary, I'm asking Italy, I'm asking all of them, and also Belgium, that we want to contribute and we, don't, we, we are not in a position of increasing our budget, but also we want to listen proposals, good, effective, and clear proposals, because until the moment we don't have listened nothing about that. We have listened, we want to increase that, we want to increase more, we want to increase one, it doesn't, it doesn't mind the numbers. So we want good, good ideas, we want uh, to know why it's important to increase the budget, but also we want to know why it's important for all the Union. We want to listen why now, here in the present, we have to arrive at a conclusion that increases our budget and which, our, which are our benefits. That's why, for example, I want to listen how do you want that this budget affects to your economies? For example, in Denmark we want that the budget affects the preservation and the management of our natural resources. We want that the budget also affects our competitiveness for growth and employment. And also, of course, we want that this future budget that today we hope, we hope, we are not doing and making red lines. We hope to arrive to a conclusion that the budget also affects our cohesion for growth and employment. That's the last and important thing that I think we all countries will have to think when we are talking and when we add important and new, I hope, ideas. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Hungary? Thank you very much, Denmark. I think I could give you a clear uh, answer on your why questions, why we want to raise the budget. Um, might I mention the situation, the current situation of the European Union facing the refugee crisis? What we are going to do with all the migrants, how we are going to protect our borders without money, what we can do if we, if we receive so many people coming into the European Union without um, kind of having some border protections, so we need money for that. Um, I think that's an important point. Um, we have to tackle the situation now, the current crisis, and we have a lot of problems in Europe, so we cannot stay at the status quo with the budget. We have to at least increase it just a little bit, just to show that we are going in the future to tackle all the problems, that we have a future for Europe, that we not want to stay at the same points always. And I think raising the budget, it's as proposed from the Commission, it's just ridiculous. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a ridiculous waste. So um, it's not a huge thing. We can later discuss on the points where we're going to spend it. But I think we should agree now for first just to raise it a little bit. And then we can decide which points um, we can shift, which issues we are going to address, which, for which issue we're going to spend more. And if I might address like the huge um, countries who are going to contribute a lot, like Germany for example, if you look at your national budget, it's ridiculous, the budget of the European Union. So please, I think 
you could really afford that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Czech Republic. Thank you. And thank you to the hungry minister who said something with sense. And to answer Sweden, uh, I'd like to say that the Czech Republic uh, has not said anything about red lines. And I'd like to know your propo proposals because you are who is not uh, you you are not uh, agree with the commission proposal and and we agree and I'd like to say that yes to answer the United Kingdom uh, our increase will be much lower than Sweden, the UK, or Germany. And it's a bilateral contract, yes. And we agree the idea of transparency, and we are doing a, a huge effort to be more transparent in all our transactions. Uh, you talk about the contribution that we have to do to um, the contribution that you will have to do. You and Sweden and, uh, and Germany, for example. But there are lots of billions and billions of euros of revenues and correction systems that you will receive. So we know that you are countries that contribute a lot of the, in the budget of the European Union, but there are countries that also need a lot. And that's what I would like to say. And if Sweden can make a proposal, thank you. Uh, OK. Next, we're going to go to uh, Latvia. Um, then we have the UK, Finland, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Germany, Spain, and Sweden. Um, in order to meet the obligation of the, the agenda and the time, uh, if we cannot and if we have not reached a unanimous agreement um, by that stage, uh, we will go to a vote of uh, qualified ma majority. Okay, so uh, Latvia. Thank you, Chair. Um, Latvia is really pleased of the comments made so far, um, but would like to. Uh, but would like to um, to uh, point out uh, to uh, after the speech of Denmark that actually uh, proposals have been made and uh, reason have been pointed out uh, before your speech. So uh, Latvia is really surprised of your um, of your arguments. Um, exactly, um, and Latvia would like to uh, welcome the UK's proposition and also believe that transparency, accountability, and more efficiency are key to the uh, European budget and um, would like to, um, but do not think that freezing in status quo is, um, is a solution, but just um, waiting for... Um, Latvia believes that with the European Union, we have the opportunity to act together and uh, to... to to create instruments to uh, address the current national issues. If we all together decide for status quo, we would only the the, the meaning of the European Union would be would be um, deeply in the mind. Therefore, uh, Latvia believes that um, the uh, the European budget would need to be uh, increased, if not to um, to high degree, still increased. And uh, for um, the transparency concern of the UK, um, Latvia believes that we could um, have um, uh, set binding conditions uh, for um, to create uh, incentive, additional incentive for reform, um, meaning that with area, uh, areas directly and solely related to cohesion policy, um, we could um, uh, specify how the money would be spent. 
Um, on the other end, um, for um, Ladia believes that uh, Ladia supports the introduction of a common strategic framework, um, recalling uh, Ladia's previous speech on a more bottom-up approach. Ladia believes that um, each states we need to come together and establish and define um, according to our own um, national strategy. Um, um, create, establish a synergy between the different funds, uh, for example, the, um, um, the cohesion policy. Um, in the end, um, uh, I would like, Latvia would like to, um, to call f not for um, um, a division right now, but um, would, would call everyone, every member state present here to uh, take a step back on its national concerns and try to envision on the long term uh, what we are discussing right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now the, the UK. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, since the United Kingdom believes that we're kind of entering in a repetitive, ambitious circle because no one seems to be making clear concessions or trying to reach a middle point, would like to welcome the uh, Latvia's proposal of monetary, monetizing the, the money and uh, establishing kind of a synergy of funds because, so that there are no um, celebrations and repetitions and making this long-term term envisioning. However, we don't believe that freezing the, the MFF budget is equal to uh, following the status quo since we're talking about not following historic patterns but instead uh, spending the money in a different way, um, n not spending more, but spending different. So, of course, this has to be more concrete uh, because this seems kind of abstract, but um, now we're just talking about a quantity so we can not um, start talking about uh, specific policies and actualizations because this would could be eternal, but the UK, for example, will propose in further, in further negotiations to accommodate factors in the, um, in the quantity, when we negotiate the quantities and all this, such as the globalization, the aging population, which is one of the main problems in the European Union because our uh, natality tax is mm, rather low, uh, or for example, the climate change, which, which is already being um, negotiated in Paris, I think. Um, so. Also, uh, you have to mm, take into consideration that we are ministers from national parliaments. We are subject to national pressures. So we don't have, um, we are not mm, free to, to do whatever we want. Of course, we would like to spend all the money we, we could in the European Union, and, but also with our population because it's the one that we have more closer to our home and we have to take care of it. So, um, w uh, we welcome the proposals that, for example, Hungary have, has made, but we cannot only give you money so that you can do one policy in immigration. Because, uh, for example, the UK um, advocates for not giving social aid to uh, non-European uh, Union citizens, but instead the ones who have been living here for four years. So um, if you only advocate for this policy, we cannot give you our support. Therefore, we would like to, for example, um, propose um, <coughs> reforms in more broader topics that will carry more benefits for all of us, such as uh, the mo modification of the market and uh, what we said before about eradicating trade, trade barriers, because we are nowadays mainly an, econo an economic union, maybe going to a political union, but we are not, not this nowadays. So uh, we have to take into consideration that we're competing with huge economies such as the, the, the United States, China, or the BRICS, and we have to be competent and not follow national um, policies that um, are um, damaging to our products and our prices and our competitiveness. So this is particular policies being put on the, on the floor. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Finland. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would not like to speak about austerity. I would consider it uh, discipline, fiscal discipline, sorry, because here we have some countries that have been rescued by the, some countries of the European Union and now uh, they won an increase of the budget. And I think that we have to reconsider the spending on the European Union by following some criteria that make us reach an agreement. My father would say two can, yeah, two can reach an agreement if one doesn't want. And that's what we have to do. We have to reach an agreement, both parts. And I can negotiate about more than 1%, but only if we continue considering the discipline, fisc the fiscal discipline, sorry. Um, finally, I would like to finish with a monet quote that says beyond Differences and geographical boundaries, there lies a common interest. We have to follow that interest and make a better European Union. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Italy? Thank you very much. I want to answer to uh, Denmark and UK. Um, Italy, uh, I want to remember that Italy is a net contribution uh, net contributor to the uh, EU, uh, EU uh, Union and mm, we want to say that uh, contribute uh, to the Union it's not uh, a, uh, an, an act of, of uh, solidarity. Uh, we can uh, destinate uh, funds uh, to um, increase and to incentivate the economy and Italy is in favor uh, to start uh, reforms uh, to have a, a more com competitive uh, country, but uh, we think that it's, it's very important for all the countries to combinate, uh, to complement uh, um, these, these austerity policies are, or these are reforms with a better um, their contribution uh, to a, a budget to, uh, to in, um, increase the competitivity of our economies. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Netherlands. Yeah, thanks. Um, I will try to be brief because this is, 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 is taking quite long. Uh, first of all, um, Netherlands, Netherlands will try to, I think, uh, I will try to be, to make a, a responsible act and I will, and I will make a, a precisely proposal to, to the group, to, to the side. Uh, I think there's some hypocritical uh, arguments here. I, I will, I will not point who's, who's, but some, some points are quite, quite bad. And I will say that uh, we all know here that, uh, uh, the net contributors, like like Netherlands itself, uh, has a lot of, of boost to 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 put money on on European Union because uh, that makes a lot of uh, increase on exportations and it takes a lot of money <coughs> come back to the country. So uh, our 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 best um, worry is is the next point, the, the introduction of taxes. So Netherlands will vote in favour. To, the, to increase the budget uh, the one to the 1.05 percentage of GNI, uh, only if uh, we later uh, don't, uh, we vote uh, against the taxes. Bec I can explain why Netherlands don't want tax, doesn't want taxes. That's because uh, it could be less transparent because it would be a, like a mess in the, in the fund system. And I think now it's clear, uh, every country puts the money in relation with the GNI, it's clear, or we can see what every, every, each country 
how, many, how much money put, uh, and the new system of taxes will be very, very, um, I don't know how to say it, I, a mess. I think it will be less transparent, and I think the European Union is, is quite, uh, it's not transparent, so I think it, it wouldn't help. So, Netherlands would vote in favor if we don't take the taxes. Could the United Kingdom just do a direct question to? Um, is the delegation, is the minister from Netherlands talking about the financial transaction tax in particular or which system of taxes because the United, uh, the European Union has quite a broad system of taxation? I'm talking about the, the proposal of the commission, the financial transaction tax. Yeah. Thank you. Particularly, uh, and uh, any tax. I mean, we are not in favor of any tax. We only think the best way is the GNI. Okay, Poland. So I want to start off by saying thank you to the UK, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and all those countries. The cohesion countries realize that you guys are getting, you guys are contributing more than you get back um, in terms of your contributions to the EU. But you guys need to think of it as an investment that, in the long term, will, will benefit all of Europe. You're investing in your neighboring countries as trading partners, and in order to complete to compete globally with China and the U.S., Europe needs to be strong as a whole and to develop together into a strong economic and where there are no weak spots of the union. And so to answer Denmark's concerns of how the funds, if the money you're giving us, how it's helping us, I can point out some examples in Poland. In Warsaw, um, we're developing uh, a, a big science center with a lot of research and development, which is one of the new goals of the EU um, to focus on making it more competitive as far as um, technologically. And then also um, the EU contributed 5.4 bill or 1.3 billion euros in Poland to build an A1 motorway to not only improve links between regions in Poland, but also to improve connections between Poland and the rest of Europe. And so this shows that your funds are not only helping the cohesion countries specifically in their countries but to make them more integrated in the rest of Europe. Also um, each year around 1.4 million Polish farmers which is a big portion of our economy it's uh, largely in agriculture um, and so 1.4 million Polish farmers receive um, aid from the EU and it's increased their income by almost 45 percent and so just all of this shows that your funds are not going to waste. They, they have been helping us develop. And if you continue to do this, then in the long term, it's going to pay off. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Next, uh, Germany. Um, thank you for all the comments from the fellow representatives. And I just wanted to uh, answer first the Czech Republic um, that, well, speak a, a long ago. but. Um, I, I just wanted to state that more budget doesn't mean more into like more integration for us and um, we we think that it's not that much that it's freezing the status quo it's just trying to adequate the the conditions of the European or European Union budget to uh, the the actual crisis uh, our proposal is that we, firm, we humbly believe that it's enough with this budget, that the main point is to reform the resources allocation because we think that they are like quite misused and, and not that equalized um, distribution, distribution of the budget and efficiency. And that um, we, the, the friends of better spending, would make concessions on the resource allocation uh, that would actually favor a lot uh, like countries like Czech Republic, Poland, Latvia, and so on, and in determined, in determined policies. Uh, thank you. Spain? Uh, well. A short question to Okay, extremely short. Uh, um, in the in the voting, the, the qualified majority, in which number is? C c do you know, please? It's out of time. This question. We will. 
No, because that depends on the number of countries, but we are only 13 countries here, okay? Yeah. We will see this in, uh, in three minutes. Have you finished, Germany? So next. Spain. Spain is agree with the Czech Republic proposal. As we said before the break, European Union needs a strong budget to make real the needs of the, of the member states. Austerity poli uh, policies are not working and, uh, and the eastern states and some of Mediterranean countries are in a poor situation. And we can only get out of this situation through the investment in cohesion policies. However, uh, we understand the positions of the other countries and I think we can reach an agreement, an agreement as Netherlands said the Commission proposal, 1.05% of GNI, uh, is between the preference of both groups. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Spain. So I will hear finally from Sweden, and then we'll uh, close this motion. I would like to answer some of the proposals coming from Czech Republic, Latvia, and the other friends of cohesion. What is not fair is to impose to our national citizens a decision which has been taken here in the European Council. And because the decisions historically taken have led us to division, as you said. Sweden is of the idea to suggest to all of you, because we are all in the European Union, that to invest in the European commitments also means that some national governments will be benefited when they contribute on, on the way they set here. So it's important to not following the historical patterns and have a broad and a global uh, view on what is going to happen. Increasing is not a long-term solution. What is a long-term solution to the economic situation is to restrict the CAP and think about how the countries are contributing on specific issues such as smart and exclusive growth, research and innovation, which are the policies which are going to make this European Union competitive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Well, thank you. For, uh, do it that you actually you didn't reach, uh, and you are uh, providing so many difficulties to reach an agreement. Uh, as, as moderators of this uh, debate, we are going to uh, propose a final vote on this motion, and and also the way to proceed would be basically um, by a qualified majority voting. Okay, which means that you are 13 member states at this time. So you will be, uh, have to reach 8.6, so let's say 9. So 9 would have to uh, agree on, on this motion, otherwise we'll move to the next motion, okay? Anyway, we are going to move anyway to the next motion, but it uh, would be nicer if we can move with an agreement, okay? So, uh, and because we don't have time to do this in a secret uh, ballot, we are going to just uh, do it in a more um, usual way way as it is made, for example, in the parliament, or whatever. So uh, maybe you can just, uh, the proposal is, Peter? We're voting on the, the proposal of the, uh, the commission, uh, which is uh, increasing the expenditure seating to uh, 1.025 uh, 1 billion uh, euros. Uh, which represents 1.05% uh, of uh, GNI. Um, so all those in favor, uh, raise your hands. Uh, 
Uh, any abstention? And any votes against? Okay, well, taking into consideration that abstention as, uh, are counted as, as negative votes, in, qualif in qualified majority voting, uh, we didn't reach an agreement, okay? Yeah. Which basically means, say again? Well, if, if you all agree on the proposal to, to freeze it, or if you can agree to propose freezing it, uh, we can hold a vote on uh, freezing it. But first, uh, do you have unanimous agreement on a vote for freezing the budget as it is? Uh, I don't think we have unanimous agreement, but maybe qualified majority <laughs> agreement. Well, in, in the end, it, it's free. Is there, is there a unanimity about uh, freezing the budget for? Since the, the increasing of the budget has been Re yeah. <laughs> has been rejected. Wouldn't you like at least to freeze it? It is freeze anyway, but I mean, because there was not agreement, but we can yeah. just see whether you would like to decide this together with the next motion. And maybe, maybe you can make some kind of uh, ah, okay. uh, side payments about, uh, about different issues. It's up to you. The responsibility of the commission is uh, clearly is basically to, uh, to reach an agreement. And as you well know, if, if you, you don't reach an agreement, the status quo, status quo prevails, which uh, I assume you already know the consequences for that. So shall we vote again? Well, we can, we can postpone the vote un, until, until later. Okay, we can postpone the, the vote, and then you can think about that again, okay? We'll give you uh, for a uh, few more minutes to think about this. And we can start with the... Yeah, we'll make some... Professor? Yeah. yeah, we'll make a four minutes break uh, before we start the, the second motion, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to begin. Um, the second session and we're going to debate in the second session the allocation um, of the resources. Uh, before we begin the second session, uh, the representatives of the, the Parliament and the Commission would like to um, indicate um, a certain level of uh, dissatisfaction with the, uh, the attitudes um, of uh, the member states. We feel that there's a lack of desire to reach uh, an agreement. We feel that uh, people are talking at cross purposes and uh, there is no attempt to trade, uh, to reach an agreement, to negotiate, um, to swap, to balance, to uh, act um, and use the abilities and skills that you have um, in order to reach this uh, agreement. So, as representatives of the Parliament and the, uh, the Commission, um, we would like to see within this session um, that strong desire and commitment for a better Europe, uh, for an agreement, um, and for a, qu uh, a quick uh, agreement. Um, so, to open the session, uh, we will debate. We will be debating uh, how the resources will be divided. Um, we'll continue with the same uh, procedure as before, and I will immediately turn to open the floor. Um, and I would like to hear. Uh, the proposals of the, the, the member states. So uh, to begin with the, the United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, first of all, uh, so as to settle the negotiations, the United Kingdom would like to propose kind of a framework to, uh, in, in between which the negotiation could move. And it is that all our efforts should be aligned with the Europe 2020 strategy. We think that this is an appropriate uh, framework. And within this, uh, we will kind of uh, just state one our positioning uh, in each one of the headings. For example, in heading 1A, uh, which, which wants to enhance economic competitiveness and strengthen transnational infrastructure programs, uh, we think that the cohesion funds should be directed to the poorest regions. However, uh, we want to propose the introduction of a new category, which is the transition regions, which would um, uh, be composed by the regions whose GDP per capita falls between 75 and 90 percent of the EU average. Um, these regions receive less funding than the less developed regions and this would be uh, better for them and um, I th we believe that this would uh, lead to a higher convergence between the European Union, Union because for them it is easier to reach the level of the more developed regions rather than the poorest ones which need more efforts, more money and mm, deeper policies. So this would be uh, one of our main points. Uh, secondly, we want to talk about the CAP funds which constitute the largest part of EU funds but uh, we think that financial means to this policy should be reduced or instead uh, we ask for significant reforms such as readjusting the policy towards uh, the second pillar of rural development. Um, we cannot uh, keep it the way it is. So um, third, the, the third heading, uh, we think that the expenses from the previous financial framework are considered to be sufficient and no further increase is requ required in this heading. However, we want to point out that in this, the fourth heading, since it comprises the the, since uh, through this heading we, we can address the problems of global poverty and transnational terrorism, we think that in this heading we need to address uh, enhanced efforts and increase the funds, for example in um, diplomacy and because we think that it's uh, one of the main problems nowadays worldwide. Um, and that's more or less it. We, uh, hope that all the member states can agree to these minimal uh, demands from the United Kingdom, but which are really important and could make uh, a huge difference in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Denmark? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair Clinton. Three points to begin. First of all, CAP, maximum we want to reduce 5%. Second point, uh, that's complicated, but we want a maximum of 24, 24, remember this number because it's really important for us, 24% of direct payments, no more, no more, no 30%, no, 24. Third point, most important point, Cohesion funds, maximum 100 billion. That's it. That's our position. We will not move. No more, no less. Thank you very much. The, the, the second, can you repeat? Um, from direct payments, payments, we are asking for 24th percent maximum of contributions. And question funds, 100 billion. Thank you. Netherlands? Yeah, I, I think, well, Netherlands is, is against to, to introduce a new category of, of countries. I think it's quite easy. I think that the countries that are big and had a lot of regions are, are in favor of, of, this, of, this, of this proposal. But countries like Denmark or Netherlands that, that didn't have a lot of of territory of, of a lot of and a lot of regions, uh, we, we don't agree, and we and we think it's not fair. We think it's fair 
to 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 um, uh, that the cohesion funds uh, goes to the poorest regions of the poorest countries, but to invent another category just because of where, uh, big countries could get more money, we think it's an unfair strategy for the little countries. So uh, Netherlands is, is, is totally against the introducing a new category. Thank you. Germany? Yes, uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Um, just to state Germany's position, Germany and UK have similar vision of how the, uh, the budget should be uh, distributed in, in these categories. Though in, um, in the common agricultural policy, seeing that France is not here and a lot of um, countries would want a small decline, uh, Germany could accept that, but as long as uh, it favors direct payments for independent from production output or production costs for farmers, and do not, that the cutting is not um, overboard, like it's not too far reaching. But in the end, and it also um, supports the new transition um, categories because uh, we don't think that it, it's, uh, it's just to be against uh, the little countries. It's just to be more efficient and really distribute the resources to the um, poorest regions. Thank you. Uh, Sweden? Of problems with the microphone. Uh, the Sweden representative is in favor of the concerns um, showed by the Denmark representative. Uh, we believe that the CIP is important, but in order to um, abolish those subsides in the agricultural policy and this is for the the fairness and the quality principles for the EU uh, it's not that we only need substantial cuts but we need to face the real global challenges in the world and we need to make this direct payments innovation directed we need to face the challenges like the the climate action also facing agri-food sector we have to take into account all this because if we don't there are some countries that won't be um, the, making support to this and we are virtually giving support to make these greening direct payments better for the future. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any more uh, comments or will we take a, a short break of two minutes and uh, the Parliament would like to, and the Commission uh, together would like to remind people of their uh, responsibilities uh, to reach an agreement. Um, that we cannot hold up uh, the process uh, much longer. Uh, you have to remember that the public opinion uh, uh, of the European Union um, is in crisis if we are shown to be an institution that is uh, unable to uh, reach an agreement. We're in a period of um, economic crisis and uh, to some extent political uh, turmoil and we would like you to uh, uh, assume uh, the, the responsibility uh, of uh, reaching an uh, agreement. So we will take a break for, for two minutes and we would, as the Parliament and the Commission, we would encourage people to uh, make an agreement, make a, uh, prepare those agreements and we will return in, 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 in two or three minutes.
Okay, first the United Kingdom. Uh, well, before the break, the United Kingdom would, would just to make an important point for this um, for this country, because we are kind of focusing on how we will finance. We don't know what because we have not agreed on anything. Uh, we're talking about, for example, we're focusing on direct payments instead of talking about the CAP or each heading and how we'll follow this uh, 2020 strategy. Um, so in this line, we, will, we want to say that <clears throat> the United Kingdom is against uh, di uh, direct uh, finance uh, because um, we talked before about being more efficient, being more transparent, and we think that this way, just we this is this is not not uh, as much accountable as it could be, and this is not in the line of a global strategy. That it's the way that will be more more um, more efficient. We just uh, in the, the previous uh, voting we couldn't uh, reach an agreement on um, on the the amount of the budget so we just need to because we said that we would uh, reach it on um, each heading so if we focus on financing and we don't focus on what we finance I th we believe that no agreement will be reached so just um, start making proposals and more being more concrete. Thank you. So I think before the break, actually, we could uh, hear the proposals from other countries that didn't say anything, like Poland, Spain, Latvia, Italy, and Czech Republic, and Belgium, OK, and Finland. So we can start maybe with Spain, and then we, we, we move in the other direction. Thank you. Uh, about the PAC funds, uh, a decline of 7% is not a small decline. Uh, we are talking about hundreds of millions of euros, and it affects the competitiveness uh, of the countries that receive CAP funds as France, Poland, Italy, or, or Germany. Uh, at these times, our primary sector and need injections of capital and a decline of the 7% uh, is deadly. So Spain and other states, I think, won't vote uh, a decline of the natural resource funds. About the direct payments, uh, we think that at crisis time, uh, we cannot focus on, on the environment. Uh, we, we have to focus on the economic recovery the competitiveness and the uh, employment. The commission pr uh, proposal affects directly the recovery and indirectly the employment. So, you're not saying why we should vote on not including the CAP, on not increasing the CAP. No, uh, I am talking now about the direct payments. <laughs> I, am, I am Mariano Rajoy. We would appreciate. <laughs> we would appreciate if you, Spain, can be more precise. Okay. Okay. Uh, Spain proposes a reduction of the percentage of the direct payments and a reduction of the ecological focus area about the commission, the commission proposal. Uh, and about the PAC funds. Uh, <laughs> We, we, we don't want a, a decline. So, uh, about the cohesion funds, Spain def defends the, the, creation, the creation of the transition regions because in the European Union, there are some countries that are developed but have undeveloped regions, and we need these funds. Uh, this, these countries are, for example, present here. Uh, Poland, Spain, Italy, the Czech Republic, and so and the, some Eastern countries. Uh, in addition, we have to fight against the youth unemployment. And for all these reasons, the Commission proposal about the cohesion funds, the second, 
the second proposal uh, have to be respected. Thank you. Thank you, Spain. Poland? So I know we didn't agree on a budget, but I think we have to make, I'm going to go under the assumption that it'll be at increased to 1.05% just because if we don't reach an agreement, that's what the, um, that's what it'll go to. And so if we're not, if we're increasing the budget a little bit, then I don't see why there's any reason to have to cut either the funding of the common agricultural policy, direct payments, or the cohesion fund, because if we're not decreasing the overall budget, why do we need to cut these programs? And as I've mentioned earlier, both the CAP and the cohesion fund are um, significantly helping uh, Eastern European and cohesion countries um, develop and catch up to the rest of Europe. Um, so I see, I propose um, just keeping the, the amount in those funds the same. Poland is open to um, uh, re, like rethinking how the common agricultural policy is implemented to make it more effective in terms of sustainable farming and modernized modern farming techniques um, as well as conserving energy and being better for the environment. But we do not see any need to reduce um, the amount of spending here. We should just make it, we could increase the spending and make it more efficient. Uh, Latvia. Thank you, Chair. Um, Latvia would like, the Republic of Latvia would like to echo the, um, the, the need of the implement of envisioning what we are currently debating uh, within the um, two southern and 20 uh, Europe strategy that the UK rightly pointed out. Um, concerning Latvia's position on the cohesion policy, and uh, especially um, uh, Latvia will further expand on the um, on the uh, diversion of funding of uh, conversion of objective regions because Latvia has already been uh, expanding on its um, cohesion policy stance. So um, for Latvia, um, diversion of funding from convergence objective regions towards an additional transition category which reduced transparency uh, of the cohesion policy and could lead to deviation from the policy basic ideas which is promoting the catching up process of less developed regions. Therefore, um, the future uh, of cohesion support do not result in the detriment of less developed EU member states in the region, meaning that in echoing the point of uh, Netherlands, um, having uh, another category would not be, um, Latvia does not think that that would be the best um, uh, mean to address um, discrepancies uh, among um, European regions. Furthermore, um, uh, Latvia believes that the co-financing rates for cohesion policy instruments in convergent regions should remain the same. Also, um, regarding the cap, um, the, um, Latvia would like to stress uh, that the cap would support uh, equitable and balanced um, policies that would reduce the disparities between member states and therefore um, would like to emphasize that future direct payment system must be based on objective criteria that characterize a factual situation. And, um, and the, because according to the proposal, um, Latvian farmers in 2020, after a long introduction period, will still receive only 54% of EU average direct payments level. In 2013, Latvia will receive has received only 35% of the EU average direct payment level. Thus, clearly, the proposal does not solve the underlying issues and goes against the principle of fairness and quality. Uh, Latvia, thus, uh, would like to uh, invite every country to reflect further on this point. Um, also, uh, Latvia considers that the Commission proposal regarding the rural development is too general and would like the Commission to further expand on this uh, project. Um, as um, the overall proposals for agriculture compliance with the Commission's own experience view is its communication uh, as uh, the cap towards 2020. And, um, and uh, Latvia would be glad to expand more on the different headings where we will have the time to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Italy? Uh, thank you. Uh, we are agree with Poland uh, to say that 
uh, we cannot uh, spend less uh, of the of the budget of the budget proposal for the commission but uh, we can uh, we are in favor to reduce uh, some um, for example the administration uh, funds uh, we can reduce it uh, by simpli uh, simplify uh, the administration uh, we think that uh, we can uh, simplify and reduce the um, the administrations that there are now in the EU uh, and also uh, for the uh, natural funds uh, it's it's really important for Italy but because it's it's key for our 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 country but uh, we can um, reduce these funds in order to invest in a uh, more efficient uh, way, but uh, it's, it's, a sh it, it's essential for us uh, mm, the funds destined to uh, a smart uh, growth because it's, it's really important nowadays to focus in this. Uh, I think that I don't have to say anything more. Okay, thank you. Hungary? Thank you. Um, just to do it like a kind of quick and efficient, as always, uh, UK wishes. Um, I'm going through the headings now. So the first one, smart and inclusive growth. Um, Hungary uh, completely agrees with the Commission's proposal that this is go should be like the hugest amount of the budget. And especially I would like to highlight the cohesion policy. It's really important for us. I think that's one of the um, one of the main priorities of the European Union that we kind of reach a, a common level, on economic level, um, in between the countries. So here are going to be um, no cuts in our opinion, and we won't agree to any any um, decline in this point. And um, yes, yeah, sustainable growth, natural resources, of course, um, also really important for us. The cap. Um, it's one of, um, um, it's a point we could do some reforms, but um, not going to cut uh, the budget for this point. Security and citizenship, yes, of course, we, we could um, maybe um, kind of raise here a little bit the spendings because um, as I already addressed the issue with the migrants, we have to protect our borders, we need money for that. Uh, global Europe and the last point, administration, I think here we can uh, save some money and um, maybe shift um, a little bit of the budget from these points to um, the cohesion policy or the security things. Thank you. Okay, Germany. Um, as I have already stated, I am, I uh, uh, agree with, well, the UK uh, proposals, but the, the common agriculture policy. Um, though uh, Germany is one of the, be well, the, the countries that benefit more from this policy, seeing that France is not here, and that we will have to reach an agreement, it's okay with doing a reform, it would be like uh, it's Germany um, position to um, we could allow a, a, a cut but not the 7% because that's not a small cut as Spain has already said and yeah we could um, we also as UK stated we we want to invest in um, in citizenship, freedom, security, and justice, and growth and jobs. And we could also use a little bit of the money spent in administration in, to be more efficient in other areas. Okay, thank you. Finland? Thank you. Uh, first of all, I will uh, comment some commission proposals. Um, to the trend to the financial transition tax, Finland is in favor of them. Um, to common agriculture policy, we would like to introduce that in the pillar two 
there will be there should be uh, some kind of uh, link to the past performance and allocations for the whole of previous period. Also, we agree in the ecological focus area and in question funds, we agree the, transi the transition regions and we we'll, would like to put emphasis in research and innovation for a 4%, not seeing them as an empty pocket or a modus operandi, but as a long-term commitment for the European Union. Also, we agree the Commission with the proposals in connecting Europe, and, but we are not agree with the proposals in administration where we uh, want some additional cuttings. And finally, in correction systems, we agree them. But going to the headings of the budget, and to be uh, clear, competitiveness for growth and jobs, uh, we would like to invest more money in that heading 1A. To cohesion 1B, we would like to keep the same level, but we know that it's difficult. We are in crisis, so we expect them to be reduced and we would accept a reduction in cohesion but uh, yeah but we would also like to uh, redistribute the way that the com that Europe invest in that heading for example European regional development fund uh, sh should have more uh, foundings or European social fund in the heading two, sustainable growth and natural resources, we uh, would like to put more money in rural development funding, but we also know that the CAP is a very, is a very uh, big invest and also has to be reduced. So we would not oppose and we will uh, be open to any uh, proposals and accept them. In security and citizenship, also, we are open. In global Europe, um, however, we uh, want uh, to propose one thing, that is that the major share, some 90%, should be allocated to ODA, official development assistance. And in administration, as I said before, additional codes. And that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Denmark. Uh, well, we'll move then to the, the Czech, Czech Republic. Thank you. Um, well, I'll be quick. We can reach an agreement with the Netherlands in not defending the finance transaction tax. Uh, we can also reach an agreement with Denmark in at 24% of direct payments maximum. But we won't defend a decreasing of, a decreasing of smart and inclusive growth or, and sustainable growth budget. Um, we will not defend the creation of transition zones uh, and will not defend a reduction of cohesion funds and we will defend uh, Funding transparently, but heavily fun finance of convergent regions, the less developed regions of the Union, and we have to help them to get the development that they have to have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Belgium? Um, thank you. In the first place, uh, we are completely agree with uh, competitiveness from, for growth and jobs. Um, the proposal of, I mean, the goals of this um, MFEF is to create new jobs, new opportunities to increase the market. So we agree with that. And uh, yes, we completely agree, agree with cohesion funds because, um, well, as we said before, the European Union is not only economical, so wouldn't be fair if um, we couldn't help the less developed uh, regions to altogether advance in a 
more um, productive and efficient Europe. Then um, the common agricultural policy, yes, we agree to, uh, because we want to protect the young farmers um, to promote safe, good food environments, uh, to protect rural economies. Uh, we would like to increase the security and citizenship to improve the security and um, yes, the border protection, asylum policy, which is really important nowadays. And um, we would like to increase the administration because uh, if we want to achieve a more competitive, more efficient um, Europe, we have to invest on that point to make it, uh, to make that the, the agreements, everything that is sp spoken here uh, be taken to the practice. And um, yes, I would like to remember that Belgium has <laughs> plenty of the EU institutions, so it costs a lot of money and a lot of invest from the Belgium government. So we would like to increase the uh, administration funds. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. And now that we have heard all of the initial um, comments and reflections from each member state, we're going to propose um, a five-minute um, break for to facilitate the informal negotiations. Uh, we would remind you again that the objective uh, is to make a deal. Um, this time is for you to work towards that and uh, bring an agreement uh, to the table. Yeah, and also reaching the uh, coalitions with the countries uh, you are supposed to make coalitions. Okay. I'm bringing a particular uh, proposals in front of the Commission to see which actually has uh, uh, a positive input for, for the final negotiation, okay? So, uh, four or five minutes for informal negotiation. Not for, for, not for coffee break, but for informal negotiation, okay? Uh, time is over for the negotiation, so uh, please, uh, let's come back to our negotiation. Finland and Czech Republic, uh, she's brown. Come on. Um, okay, well, it has uh, come to our attention that uh, the representative for the United Kingdom would like to uh, make a proposal. Um, so we will turn, turn to the, the proposal and then we will invite comments. Uh, yeah, I would like also the... the the delegation of Finland and of Germany to propose it with me as well. Uh, do, should we go here or in the middle or to be together? I mean,
Netherlands. Um, uh, I don't know how to. <laughs> um, it seems like they, 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 I don't know, like the, the, the cool countries go there and say to us what's, what's good and what's bad. So, uh, yeah, yeah, of we know, we know how you work normally, so you, you don't have to make explanation. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that Netherlands is the only country who, who made the, the responsible act to, to say, okay, let's vote in favor of the multi-financial framework. Uh, we sit on this, on this matter, uh, and we sit in other matters, but we can sit in the matter of the new category of, of transition countries because it has no sense Yeah, but, but you said, uh, sorry, one moment. Um, the ex the exposed and exempt uh, control goes to the convergence regions? Okay, so the Netherlands point is to reduce the cohesion funds, but to the country, to one moment. What, uh, we would ask all members to perhaps return to their uh, places. Thank you. Is, is what you wanted in Netherlands? The position of Netherlands is that uh, if we reduce cohesion funds, we, are, we know that we will receive less money, Netherlands as a country, and we accept this fact because we think that uh, uh, some countries uh, don't have to receive uh, cohesion funds because, mm, I don't know, it's like... Um, I don't know how to explain in English, but <laughs> I know how to explain in Dutch, but... Uh <laughs> we have a problem. Yeah. No, no, I don't know how to... <laughs> um, can I think and then I talk again? <laughs> yes, yes, you can think before, yes. Uh, Germany? I want to, um, to say that... Um, since the CAP pro uh, countries have made some concessions like reduce, reducing the budget, um, I believe that uh, the cohesion fund, or we believe, because we have reached an agreement in the informal meetings, should not, uh, as, uh, as the representative of the UK said, raised or, um, or um, cut. Uh, but to be better spent. And we also made, made the concession of not um, implementing, implementing this transi transi tran transition uh, areas uh, just for, for countries like, like the Netherlands. So I think that it should, like, the, the aim is to reach an agreement. So, um, that should be taken into account as we all have made concessions. Finland? Thank you. Uh, I want to say something to what uh, Netherlands uh, has commented. Is that uh, the cohesion is going to have a new criteria, new mechanisms of control and for all the, con for all the countries that includes uh, transparency, new incentive, etc. So it's not uh, looking for our interest. It's just for Europe and the citizens of Europe. Just that. Thank you. Uh, UK? Yeah, the UK has just remembered a conversation uh, that had with Latvia. Um, yeah. Because Libya just uh, said before the break that it was in favor of transparency, promoting the catching up process, no establishing of new category, and promote equitable and balanced policies in CAP we, through an objective criteria. We believe that all this has been contemplated in our proposal. And also, uh, Libya was concerned about uh, how this would be uh, dealt with is if we. Uh, cut it in, if we, if we cut in the administration. And we said that there was, it was not incompatible since 
it was just uh, establishing a criteria so that the national administrations that won't be affected had to had to make a uh, um, um, a control of uh, of these funds and and the policies they were they were directed to and make an inform and be accountable to the European Union. The European Union does not have to increase its administration to deal with this establishment of criteria. We don't see that it is incompatible. So we believe that um, we have been um, really contemplating with your uh, concerns and, and that it's a good proposal uh, to, to reach a, a unanimous agreement even. Um, okay, Poland. Oh, sorry. So I think we have to take into account that the um, the cap is the second largest expenditure of the EU. So if we're cutting that by 3.5 percent and we're not cutting the overall budget, then we're going to have a lot of extra money to spend. And while I do think we need to spend some of that on solidifying Europeans' borders and dealing with the refugee crisis, I think it would be more wise instead of to focusing on global Europe as much to maybe consider adding it a little bit more to the cohesion fund just because that helps. You're, you're taking away for the developing countries a little bit from farming which is one of their most important sectors of the economy and so to give back to that it would be more helpful to add it to the cohesion fund. I agree that we need to make it more, more efficient and add incentives to that policy but if I think it'd be more effective to because we're going to have a lot more money, so at least considering adding some of that extra money to the cohesion, I think we have enough to do that. So I'd maybe consider, instead of keeping cohesion the same, increasing it by a little bit. Okay, Latvia? Uh, I mean, numbers don't matter, maybe one or two percent. All right, Latvia? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, uh, Latvia is not sure that bilateral discussions are uh, permitted with the European Council, but um, Latvia will still um, uh, take the, this opportunity to respond to UK. Uh, it's true that we had some informal, um, informal uh, discussion during the break, and that Latvia agrees with most of um, most of the uh, propositions that have been put forward, but uh, Latvia does not recall um, going against this proposal yet. Um, furthermore, uh, regarding the question of, of administration and the administrative costs that uh, UK present, uh, Ladia is really interesting in knowing um, uh, UK stance on this on this matter. Uh, in so far as um, uh, how is UK going to make his national administration fully accountable to EU regulation? Um, uh, and furthermore, um, so uh, Latvia is, uh, is open to uh, any uh, argumentation on this. Uh, furthermore, um, Latvia would like to uh, echo the point of Poland uh, regarding the uh, increasing funding of the cohesion policy. Uh, Latvia believes, as is been repeatedly saying, that cohesion policy and uh, within the 2020 e um, Europe strategy is key to um, to reduce the discrepancies between the different countries of the European Union. And um, also, Latvia would like to uh, point out that what's um, um, to have um, more uh, objective and equitable criteria within the distribution of the common agricultural policy, which is a point that has not been mentioned yet. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, uh, Finland? Yeah, it's, uh, thank you, first of all. Uh, it's related to the Poland's intervention. Um, with all the codes we are going to propose, it's 1% of administration and 3.5% in CAP. We will have a 4.5% of uh, cuttings. We would like to know where, uh, well, how much you want of that percentage to to go to 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 security and citizenship was oh well no to to the refugees crisis just that I mean I'm not an expert in like actually how much money they're spending in every part but 
I would think that maybe to solidify the refugee crisis, you could use like 1.5%, maybe spend another 1.1% on global Europe and then put the rest in cohesion. All right, Hungary. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the UK, Finland and Germany for issuing that proposal. Hungary really will support it. Um, and uh, we really appreciate that there are not going to be cuts in the coercion funds. Um, maybe just one exception um, we won't agree will be that um, the, yeah, these coercion funds um, are going to be set on uh, kind of these conditionality provisions with the ex post and the ex ante um, um, evaluation because we think that's going to be a kind of uh, race in bureaucracy and makes the whole, um, whole system more complicated. And as we are going to cut the administration, as I think we agreed on 1%, or not yet agreed, but we discussed about 1% cutting the administration costs. Um, I think it makes absolutely no sense to uh, have this kind of um, conditionality in the, in the coercion funds. Thank you. Uh, Denmark. Thank you very much, Chair Clinton. Well, I have a plane, Barcelona Prat, from to Copenhagen, one hour, so the time is limited. Uh, also, uh, we want to add something. For, first of all, we are really, really enjoyed about the proposal from UK, from Germany, and from our colleagues, Nordic colleagues from Finland. Um, but we also want to be re more precise because we love the principles, but we want to talk about numbers. Okay, I, I think that we ha we have more or less 30 minutes, but it's important that all of us, all the countries that we are in favor of this proposal, we talk about numbers because the Commission has done to us important and concrete proposals. And I think that's now it's the time to talk about numbers because finally that's the important thing. Thank you very much. We have a four point five percent to invest in other areas as a result of the cuts. So you can also propose where this can go and we will discuss it and reach an agreement. So if you have any proposal, we want to know it. Uh, Sweden. Which came from Germany, uh, Finland and UK. Sweden is totally agree with the fact that the transition idea is for making development better for all the European Union. I want to ask something which is related to the countries which oppose this, which is the alternative to this objective criteria. And on the other hand, we also agree with Denmark that we want to talk about numbers because the Commission has talked about some proposals such as the 5% of ecological focus area, which is going to be maintained in the CAP. It is important because it's all about the global challenges which we want to face. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from uh, the United Kingdom and then the representative of the commission would like to uh, say something. The United Kingdom would like to say that if we have not com uh, commented on certain particular um, increment or decreasing in, in the pro Commission's proposal is because we agree with this, for example, this 5% that has just been comment, um, commented, and we have already talked about numbers and where the money comes from and where it goes from. We talked about this 4% cut, and we said that this would go on heading four on uh, borders, um, global policy, transnational terrorism, and some co uh, commented upon increasing the cohesion funds. The UK, the UK would contemplate this increment as, as far as it goes to research and innovation. 
no other place. Um, thank you. Well, thank you for all the proposals. I think we are getting closer to one agreement, which is good, but uh, we are still not there, okay? So I would like to make some, well, to collect some of these ideas you have already proposed and to make sure to what extent we are, uh, well, close enough to make a f final decision, okay? So um, I would like to know, regarding to research and innovation, I would like to propose uh, some slight uh, increase uh, uh, regarding to the previous um, um, financial perspective, 2006, 2013. At that time, it was 60 billion euros. I would like to propose uh, 70, 80. I would like to know what the member states think about this. But, but very quickly, Cisco. Uh, Total in favor. What? Total in favor. Okay. Mm, well, can, you, can you repeat, please? Uh, yes, to increase the budget for research and innovation uh, to 60, 70 billion euros for the whole period of time, uh, 2014, 2020. 70, 75? Sure, Poland, are you sure? What about Latvia, Belgium, Spain? Yes? Good. So we have already one agreement. What about um, administration? This is a extremely contentious issue because basically there are two countries who are the clear uh, the beneficiaries of, of this, of this uh, well, this is around 5% of the budget. So it's not much, but it's still relevant. So there were agreements proposed uh, to reduce uh, basically the, this percentage. Um, basically, we have two positions here. One is a string uh, a position from the British that they want to make very tough cuts on this particular issue. Others are more um, uh, balanced, and others want, want to keep the status quo. So, which is the general proposal on this issue? Cutting how much? 1%. Only 1%? Yeah, it's 1%. What? We accept to reduce more of 1%. Nevertheless, we don't accept increasing two and a half hours without adjustment. Now is a very low percent, so we consider that more than 1% is excessive, so 1% is okay. Um, what, like, we believe that 1% is okay since uh, there will be a need for administration for the ex ante and ex post uh, conditions control in the cohesion fund, well, so we believe that 1% is okay. Um, I have to, to say that the proposal is 5%. Uh, I think 1% is very few, it's, it's very low. Uh, 1% of the, of the budget for administration. Yeah, and that's the 5%. Or, or a 1% or a of the total budget. I, I understand that we, we have to deal about the, the budget of the administration. We cannot say about the global budget if we are talking about administration. No, but the, the question so, posed by the Czech Republic is right. There is a doubt here, a confusion about the 5% or 1% regarding to the previous framework or regarding to the total budget. Uh, yes, to make, to make clear. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Poland. The, the, the administration is 5% of the total budget, and we would be reducing that to 4% of the total budget, so we're, redu we're cutting it by 1% of the total budget. See? Uh, my proposal was, uh, the proposal of the Commission is lower than that. As you can imagine, we are very interested in having good uh, bureaucracy, very uh, professional bureaucracy, so... Uh, I, um, the perception clearly is that uh, we have a problem here. 
fin a Finland. That's uh, related to a new criteria, new mechanisms to ex ante and ex post control and the role of the member states in controlling. So the administration will, be, will continue being important, but we have to cut in some headings and that's one of the easiest to say it in a certain way. Uh, Denmark. Okay, I think it's it's important to to reduce uh, the percentages can be from two to five. I think the maximum five. I think the five it's a good option, but I think that something that it's important to not change is, as we have said, one thing is reducing five percent administration, and the other thing, as you have read from the Commission proposal, is an increase of working time of the staff, that's, if we reduce, I think that it's, we, are, we arrive to the objective, reducing and then adding two and a half hours more for the staff without no adjustment on salary or other bonus, etc. That's, that's not fair. And that's, I think, that, that's the thing that we, we have to be all in favor of not changing that. So we, we can be in favor of reducing to one more, 5% doesn't mind, but not changing the, the time, the working time without no adjustment. Thank you. Belgium. Yes, this is why I'm strongly disagree with the, the, um, the non-incrementation, the decrease of the administration because we want to, we don't want bureaucracy, we want the institutions to work as they have to do and if we reduce the administration, um, we will have workers that are working more hours to do the same, uh, to do the same work, yes, but um, less uh, retributed, which is against of the MFF which <laughs> wants to increase the job and uh, the employment and stuff. So, yeah, a decrease of the administration would be against the, the objectives and will create uh, a worse um, um, worker situation and a lot of bureaucracy. Thank you. From the Commission, uh, there is a proposal to leave this uh, issue at, until the end of the negotiation, just to make sure whether there could be some kind of accommodation between different issues, okay? Um, let's move to the next uh, issue, which is the cohesion fund. According to the proposal by the UK and Germany and Finland, there is agreement to keep the status quo. Uh, we don't reduce regarding to the previous framework. Is there uh, anyone who is agreement? There could be a transition time if you if you prefer, but uh, I would like to know what I assume that everyone here, including the cohesion countries, agreed on this. Uh, well, Poland wanted to increase one percent. Um, but the UK is, is saying no way. Any other intervention um, about this? So we leave this uh, Netherlands. Uh, yeah, what, yes. what I would try to say before is that um, Netherlands think that um, um, the, the Netherlands proposed was to, to cut, uh, to only give cohesion funds to the convergence countries. All the other funds uh, to cap it. Uh, uh, and we know that th this would uh, prejudicate uh, the, the, the Netherlands itself. But uh, how I see that I'm the only one who thinks like that, uh, I, I think I will, I will agree with the proposal. Of well, I think that also Spain and other countries wanted a transition time just to make sure that also they, not just Eastern European countries, but also Southern European countries, other countries we don't have here, uh, they prefer to, uh, to have some time until they are not allowed to, to get some funding. But I can see that there is strong agreement on this, uh, keeping the status quo, and then we can just adjust uh, minimally uh, to what extent the transition time is going to be relevant. 
and whether we can increase a little perfect percentage in some countries, okay? So let's move to the next uh, issue about the CAP. Uh, is there agreement about keeping the CAP in the uh, real terms, uh, in per uh, percentage terms, or? Everyone, I think Poland was uh, pretty much uh, saying that they want to keep the status quo. Yes, Germany. Well, um, from the informal meetings, we actually, I, I, well, I as a representative of Germany, I uh, think we actually re reached an agreement of, yes, cutting it, but not 7%, only 35 because we are well aware that other areas need also um, investment and uh, to do, uh, uh, Germany is agreeing also to do a uh, small reform because it's aware of its position of large, uh, its large benefits of the CAP. As long as those cuts go to the um, already uh, stated for of the proposal of the UK um, representative said, uh, the research and so on, but I believe that we all agree of on the 3.5 cut. Yeah, so I don't think you like heard about our informal discussion. So I think it'd be better if we if we cut it by 3.5 percent. Then that they said they would agree to increase the cohesion fund a little bit for research and development. So I think that's more fair. You are, you are proposing to reduce the CAP and to increase a little bit the cohesion fund. That's what we agreed upon in the yeah. informal. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Latvia? Thank you, Chair. Um, no uh, problem. Latvia would, uh, want, um, would like to support the point made by uh, Poland and would like to state, as it was stated during informal discussion, that Latvia would not agree to this proposal uh, unless as uh, much as the cutting of 3.5% uh, would be implemented criteria to ensure the fairness and credibleness of those criteria for um, um, equal, um, fairness of agri agricultural uh, competitiveness uh, in the European Union. Thank you. Okay, so I think we are close to the agreement uh, about connect, uh, connecting Europe. There was also uh, an agreement, as far as I know. Poland, is say no. Poland, do you agree about this? Actually, right now it is around 40 billion euros uh, for the European network transport. Um, uh, so, if anyone disagrees, it's the time to say this. So, um, so basically, there are two issues which are uh, at the end, which are not clear. One is about administration, which there are slight differences, and the second one is um, also about the percentage of a. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, so one is administration and another one is about the percentage to increase the occasion fund and of course we can also open or reopen again the discussion about the budget because this is uh, the adequate time to uh, rethink about this, okay? So um, just short interventions about this and, and then we'll make a decision. Short intervention. Um, the United Kingdom uh, would like to uh, say that uh, would like to propose a cut in administration of uh, five percent as Denmark uh, had uh, supported, but contemplating the concerns of uh, Belgium, for example, not increasing the the, um, the timing of, um, of two hours and a half, so cutting five percent, but not no increase in the in the timing. And uh, in the global budget, we think that we kind of have reached a balance, so we, uh, we want to support uh, freezing the budget. Thank you, UK. I also forgot the issue of the British rebate. Okay. 
So I think if someone wants to say something out of the business Let's survey, open this subject uh, now. <laughs> maybe it's the time to say it right now. Uh, Netherlands? I, I just only want to say that the, the thing about uh, increasing the number of hours of every worker is to, is to compensate the fact that you reduce the, the number of, of workers. I mean, the reduction of the budget uh, means that you have to, to uh, as you want, uh, to, to put away to fire people, uh, and that means that if you want to, to do the, the same service, you have to, to increase the hours of the other workers. That's the fact. If you, uh, if you uh, fire workers and you don't uh, increase the hours of the others, the service will be, will be worse than it was before, I think. Belgium? I would like to ask to the United Kingdom um, from which, um, where are you going to take the, the amount of money from? I mean, where do you want to cut from the administration? What do you think that is a lack or it's um, just unnecessary? Thank you. Uh, we just, in the informal negotiations, we just called upon uh, reducing redundancies, which are quite a spread in European Union nowadays. Um, for example, we could contemplate uh, um, gathering experts' informs and follow their advice, but we think that there's field for this, these cuts. No. No. Latvia? Uh, Latvia, I would like to point out that maybe um, the, uh, the administrative cut would, be, uh, would not be necessary um, if um, the spendings on the salaries would be reduced. Thus, the problem is not quantitative, but it's qualitative. It means that uh, Latvia would like, yeah, L Latvia would like to point out that uh, and to call for reflection on the salaries of the administrations, on maybe uh, and, um, a reduced increase of working, of, uh, of hours of work, and, um, and, av um, and a reduced um, reduction of uh, work workers, meaning that we can have um, not 5%, uh, no, no cuts, but uh, less salaries and augment a bit the uh, number of hours uh, to, uh, to ensure that austerity is applied by every uh, European citizen. Sweden? We don't propose commission. We have still problems with this. Okay. Um, we should be realistic in terms of uh, what Belgium said because 2.5 hours increase in the in the in the working hours per per week it's maybe too much if we still reduce administration and on the other hand we have just proposed uh, more control and. This is going for transparency. If we cut on administration, there is no way we can make the citizens know what we are doing from the, from the European Union. So, I mean, the cut 1% is okay for us. But 1% on the global, you yeah. know, talk, you know, we're talking about 5% on the relative. Uh, no, no, yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think oh, okay. now we're yeah, yes, yes. UK. Yeah, so since Sweden agrees with the proposal, which was not clear, uh, we want to uh, say to the uh, Minister of Latvia that we're not talking about salaries or working times. We're talking about eliminating redundancies. So the, the workers will keep on having the same salary they are having now and doing the same job, but not making two, two people the, the, sa the same job. I mean... Uh, that's where we want to get and we want to study this because there are problems nowadays and we don't think it's incompatible with establishing a criteria and, and more control and more efficiency and more transparency. It's not giving more job but doing the job in a better way.
Well done. Just quickly, if you, this is coming more from a, like not from Poland, but from me. Um, if you increase their working hours by 2.5 a week, that's literally just a half an hour a day. And I don't like, it sounds that it's not that efficient of an organization the way it's working right now. So I think that the workers could manage to work a little bit harder because that's probably part of the problem is that they're not, they don't have strict standards. It's not like, you know, they're not like required to do as much. So I think they c like for the salary that they get, because I would imagine that the, they, the salaries they get working for the European Union are pretty good. They could manage to work a half an hour more every day. Denmark. Is the last intervention about this issue, okay? About oh, administration. Okay. Well, in relation about the people could think about the same about saying our fellow minister from Netherlands. Okay, you can, obviously, if you cut and you reduce 5%, you have to increase the 10% of hours of the workers if you want the same or a, bet, a better result of the EU administration. But you can do, you, you cannot be so extreme. You have to be more moderate because, okay, the objective is to reduce, and as the uh, as the commission has said to us, the objective is to, or uh, not the objective. So the expectation is to arrive on five billion of of euros in savings doing this cutting of five percent. But you, we have to be more moderate. You can you can cut five percent, but you can do adjustments of salaries to these people. So doing that, we will possibly we can arrive to a better conclusion and, and save money, but no so much money than doing the, the proposal here we have. Thank you. Okay, so as a broker of this negotiation, I would like to make a proposal uh, to all of you. One would be uh, that we could keep the rebate for some member states, including the UK, Sweden, uh, Denmark, and Finland, but we can just make also slightly uh, cuts on the on the um, administration. Is that acceptable for everyone? Yes. UK is saying yes. <laughs> what about the rest? So everyone is no. Everyone La Latvia does not agree. Doesn't agree. Okay. On. On your, on your proposition on the slight cut of uh, administrative expenditure, Latvia believes that it's really broad and not detailed at all, and Latvia would not like to agree on such terms. Okay, uh, Germany? Yeah, well, regarding uh, the administration cut, um, it's not that, just to clarify, uh, I, um, as a proposal, we would not focus so much on the, on the, um, on the salaries, maybe, but all the uh, bureaucracy that maybe are, as, as, as the representative of UK said, just repeating maybe functions or, or these organizations. And, and that, well, I, I'm sure that in the European administration there's a lot of it. And, um, for example, optimization of certain areas. And as the representative of the UK said, we could uh, ask experts for opinion for uh, the better approach to this, but uh, administration could be very improved in these terms. It's not about focusing of, on, on, on cutting salaries. That, that would be, I believe, the general proposal of, for the cut in administration. Another proposal from the Commission, because we, well, some people have to come back to their national countries, you know, so. Uh, um, would be to take away Strasbourg, just to, in order to eliminate, for example, the, 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 the expenditures of administration, we just move Strasbourg to, uh, to Brussels, and all the sessions are going to take place in Brussels from now on. Uh, is that all right for everyone? Well, it's, it's their problem. <laughs> 
So, Latvia, do you agree on this? Uh, Latvia does not see any problem with this at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, this means that we are reaching more and more agreements, and there are a few things left, um, mainly the percentage of the cohesion funds and also the transition time for some countries, and also, of course, the, the budget, the general budget, whether should be increased slightly or should be uh, just remain in one percent. So I would like to open again uh, the first discussion uh, of today, and uh, I would propose actually maybe uh, like a secret vote, because I have the perception that, uh, well, some member states will feel more comfortable comfortable to, uh, to vote secretly, okay? So, uh, the, of course, this is just a proposal, okay? I mean, you can say if you agree or you disagree. Feel comfortable with uh, a secret vote? Yes? I'm sure that all the countries will appreciate the concessions that we've made and will vote on the smart uh, thing to do. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, yes. I just wanted to state as the representative of the UK that Germany has made a lot of concessions uh, regarding the CAP. No, regarding the CAP and the trans transition region, so um, I hope other countries would take into consideration the efforts made. Many thanks, Germany. Uh, Netherlands? Which, I mean, Germany is the third country with, with more investment on agriculture in the, in the CIP, so... Let's not fight with each other. That it's, uh, the, delegation, the delegate of Denmark has to go back to Denmark and vote uh, secretly or not secretly or whatever. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's make the secret vote uh, about the budget. I remind uh, you there are two options. One was, uh, uh, yes, you can write down somewhere uh, how we. So, so we're, we're, we're voting, to be clear, we're voting on um, the proposal uh, by the, the Commission, which is 1.05%, uh, um, simply yes or no to the, the Commission uh, proposal, 1.05, yes or no. Do we, do we write the country name and yes or not? Only yes or no, I think. Well. Okay, that's it. Señor Nogueras. <laughs>
the, the results are in. And uh, the motion has been passed. Uh, nine votes uh, to four votes. So uh, the budget will be increased, which will allow us to solve the rest of the, the outstanding issues regarding the cohesion, uh, the administration, and uh, the last issue. So Sorry. thank you very much, and until 2020, okay, for the next uh, financial <laughs> perspective. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no hemos terminado todavía. Bueno, formalmente sí, pero vamos a robar unos minutos más porque yo no sé en qué medida sería. Hablamos en inglés, ¿verdad? Sorry, uh, Jordan. Uh, would be interesting to. Um, um, sorry, I didn't see that you were here. Uh, would be interesting to make a short evaluation about um, how things have been uh, working in the simulation. Whether we have been really using uh, quality arguments, just descriptive information or whatever, and uh, and I think it would be good uh, to hear from different opinions. Also, we will give our opinion, but um, general evaluation, okay, from from everyone uh, would be good. Uh, we do in public. We talk in public, or yeah, 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 okay. like uh, what? Well, I, I have been. I have been in several models, not European Union model, but personally it's really been organized. Firstly, from the, the I will say the software preparation, I will say the information, the, all the documents, I think are really, really well done and really well thought. And then I think we, from my part, it has helped my, my preparing my position. Secondly, the the hardware, the 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 room and all the all the flags and well the catering, it's perfect. That's another thing that I think it's also really important in models because people have to be motivated, and these kind of things motivate people. Thirdly, about the negotiations, the, the thing that we have done today, well, it's complicated. Four hours to arrive, important, well thought conclusions when these kind of topics countries take hours or hours of preparation but I think that the negotiations are, um, have been really interesting and that's the, the thing that I wanted or my objective here to talk about these kind of topics and to see the different position and see people who I know that are not at the positions that today they have been, and it's, it has been nice, really nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ruya. Uh, next one, Irene. Um, I would like that the, this type of events would have more publicity because um, I was, I mean, they informed me, uh, was a friend who told me about the event and stuff, but I didn't see it in the campus or wherever. And, uh, but yes, the organization uh, was good. I would like to uh, to have more members to discuss. I don't know what happened with the other ones, but. And uh, I would like, to, because I am in an association called SAEU, uh, Students Association for the European Union, and I would like to take a picture to upload it and to promote this type of events because I think it's interesting and more people can be interested too. You okay? Yes. I've, I've participated in models of the United Nations and I consider that mm, just being four hours, which is a minimal amount of time, because usually the models uh, take uh, four days long. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we kind of have reached um, mm, concrete agreements, although maybe a little unrealistic. But um, yeah, and I want to uh, focus uh, just to stress the place, which is I think which I think it's fantastic with the mi mi micros, and micros and all this. It's been a good experience. Thank you. Uh, Julia? Yeah. I agree with my, my, my colleagues about the place and the organization and so on. I would propose doing the 
I, I know it's difficult, but uh, doing the simulation a little bit longer for hmm. what Laia has said, and that um, it's a very short time, four hours, to discuss all the information, for example, or, or all the positions German had in, uh, in this topic, and there, was, there were a lot of interesting, um, maybe, details to be discussed. Uh, and forming, for example, uh, unexpected coalitions and so on. Uh, but overall experience, it, it's very, re really nice. Thank you, Julio. Uh, yeah, um, Pao, Latvia. Um, I, uh, I'm, um, I find it really good. It's a really good initiative, and I second, uh, like, fully the, all the different compliments that have been made so far. Um, in terms of progression, I think that it, it would be interesting to reduce the scope of negotiation, to um, have um, to explore more uh, the negotiation. I feel like we've been a bit short of time right now, and uh, we kind of started to rush in the end, and um, and that was not really realistic. So I think that might be the that, mm -hmm. that might be the main flaw for me. Uh, I maybe I, we, uh, that would be interesting to have. Um, a previous session that would be that would prepare people uh, before the main session, that would be interesting, and um, and yeah, basically, uh, I, I, my my suggestion would be to be more um, um, to say that sometimes in negotiation people do not find an agreement and it's and it's fine, mm -hmm. like to not not like have agreements that are un unrealistic, but like to really like um, plantear la situación. Well, the final outcomes were not the real ones, but that is not important, okay? I think the important issue here is basically, well, there are other issues which are, I think, more important, and we'll discuss it, if you want, a little bit later. Uh, your yeah, so we did this in our class on Monday, but this was definitely way better than what I learned. I learned a lot more than from my class, but that's obviously because the people here prepared a lot more than the rest of the kids who are studying abroad because they don't want to. But um, I think it would have been better if we had a l more countries. And I know it's hard, to, like the hard part is finding a time when more people want to come. But like, we didn't have France, so that was kind of. No, we did have France until yesterday, but France say yesterday, I'm not coming. So we can, we can do nothing about that. I mean, actually, this has happened with many member states yeah. that they, they were supposed to be here. And in the last f two of the days, they say, well, I'm sorry, I cannot go. But what we can do about this, I mean. Uh, well, we can do something and we'll make something next year because uh, actually uh, I'm trying to negotiate this with the dean uh, to have uh, like two credits. Uh, it's the only way that the students take this more seriously and they invest more time and everything is, is going mean, to work better. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean. It's You're probably not going to get, it's like hard to get Americans who are here because we want to spend our time yeah. enjoying Spain. But mm. And a lot of us travel on Fridays every mm -hmm. weekend, so yeah. like, that's why uh, Danny couldn't come. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the case for some American students, but uh, uh, I don't think it was the case for other students. Okay. Anyway, um, any other uh, opinion? Or yes, Guillem. Um, yeah, I don't want to repeat, but yeah, it's. I, I want to say thank you to, to to you to both because it's it's very nice and it, you, you learn a lot and and more if you I mean I think we all here we spend time in at home working on it and we learn a lot at least I I, I learn uh, and also as Roger said it was a lot of information and very good uh, I don't know very good distracted and yeah I like it so thank you maybe next year. A day, a day, uh, a full day, it would be nice because... Yes, morning. actually, uh, these kind of simulations is made, for example, in some American universities and some British universities as well, and this could last until four days, okay? But these are real simulations with many more actors, including members of the European Parliament, members of the European Commission, interest groups, and so on. But, uh, well, I mean, this is the first time we do this. Uh, I think... This year was completely impossible to uh, to do that, but the the plan is to to uh, at least to cover the whole day. Uh, also having a nice uh, uh, meal together, maybe uh, somewhere, uh, because also you can use these kind of moments to negotiate informally. Okay, no, these things actually uh, happens in in Brussels. Okay, so 
And um, what else uh, would I would like to say? Uh, um, well, in, in more substantive terms, what I missed a little bit was um, well, more clear ne negotiation strategies from some of you. Some of, some of you, I think, have already very clear uh, which wa was the position, but I think uh, that there is room to improve the, the quality of your strategy when you are negotiating. Okay, This is extremely important because uh, uh, before you are coming here, I think it's, you should have uh, very clear in, in your mind uh, which is your position, to what extent you are, you are able to give in, in on your position, uh, which could be your um, partners to make coalitions, uh, how much uh, you are willing to, um, yes, I mean, to pay for just giving on your positions. All this information is, is, is really important, okay? And I think some of you uh, have this information. It is true that also it is hard to find this information for some member states, okay? That's true. I mean, the detailed information, uh, although Peter is saying that there is plenty of information already online, I think for a small member states, it's harder than for bigger member states. Uh, that's strong, okay? But, um, so that would be one point, just a feedback uh, uh, to you. Uh, and also, um, well, I mean, in terms of uh, arguments, uh, I think uh, I, I didn't, I also miss a little bit to that you was uh, engaging with arg argumentation with each other, okay? I mean, because most of the time you just present your uh, uh, your ideas and your proposals, which is fine, and this is the first stage. But the second stage is actually uh, arguing, and this is very important in the European Union, to show how good or how, uh, how much quality have your arguments, not just for your interest, but also for the collective interest, okay? Uh, and this is extremely important in formal institution in the European Union. As far as you are able to show that uh, your arguments, independently of your interests, uh, are very good, I mean, this is the best way to get partners for your position, okay? So, um, yeah, I mean, just to engage a little bit more uh, with each other. Uh, maybe it is true that it was a time constraint for that, okay? Because we didn't have, in four hours, we cannot do everything. But, uh, well, just to, um, to say this from my view, I don't know, Peter, if you want to add something else, or? No, I think I, I more or less the same. Thank you for, uh, for participating. And of course, as well, it's a learning process uh, for everyone. You know, and, and that uh, perhaps maybe, yeah, um, going ahead in the future um, in terms of preparation, f focusing on the arguments, how to convince, what way to convince, and maybe as well we could structure in um, in the first session maybe more, because I think in towards the second session with the, the side agreements and uh, the informal negotiations, maybe as well in the first session we could have um, cut it shorter um, in order enforced a little bit more the, the, the side agreements because I think then in, in towards the end we started to see much more engagement between people and trying to bring people towards your position because there's two real aims. One, a, a knowledge about the functioning of the, the system but also negotiations and, and, and how to convince people um, whether that be through strong um, logical uh, arguments or whether it be through uh, more Machiavellian uh, side deals and uh, and playing the political game and trying to find that balance between the two um, the two objectives. But um, apart from what uh, Javier said, I mean, I thank you for, for all the people who have, have come and, and for your comments. And if there's anyone who would actually like to add anything that hasn't added anything out now, to send an email to the, um, the, the same web address with, with any comments or anything, uh, and uh, we'll get back to you. Yeah, we will appreciate that for improving in the coming set, in the coming years, okay? And also, there is uh, we have made just also for, for information for us, uh, like a kind of evaluation, uh, individual evaluation. Uh, we would appreciate also you can just fill in this now, and you can give us also now. And finally, after that, we can just make the final picture, uh, like the official picture of uh, the simulation. Okay? Is
you can tell you the juice and the pastas or whatever, okay? Because, uh, uh, well, otherwise.